So I went to PAX about two weeks ago, because that's when PAX was. And I spent most of my time over here on the expo floor. This is where all of the video games are. There's other parts of PAX, such as the part with all of the uh, board games, honestly. Um, and parts where people do borrow consoles and play games on them. And parts where they, I don't know, listen to people talk about how to do game design or how to adequately troll people in Dungeons & Dragons. But I spent most of my time here. And this was the largest of the summit areas. Unfortunately, due to some, I don't know, weird constraints, they had to go and break it into two different parts. And this was in the main new building, uh, the new, main new Seattle Conference Center. So just to demonstrate, here is the new Conference Center. It's fairly big. Here is the old Conference Center. It's kind of ugly. Um, it actually goes over the street. It's kind of weird how it actually works. Um, like you see right here, there's a street that goes through the convention center and like the freeway goes under it. Like this is a very 1950s idea. Are there parts where they sell Conqueror's Bad Fur Day for 10K? Yes, actually, I could point you to that. So this was the Arches Expo and the spot where they sold those was approximately right here. Um, there was one of those, you know, game quality raider seller type things. I didn't even look at what they had. Last time I saw them, they were trying to sell a color a dinosaur for 250 bucks. Nobody needs color a dinosaur for 250 bucks. But anyway, so I went and played a whole lot of games, a ridiculous number of games, and I wrote up a spreadsheet of them. And they are here, this giant spreadsheet. You can even see that I'm editing the spreadsheet. Isn't that surprising? Um, so, yeah. So basically the plan is we're going to run down the spreadsheet for some of these. Going to play the demo and other ones we'll just look at it and talk about it. And if I remember something interesting to say about it, I'll say something about it. That's the plan. And I will put the spreadsheet in chat at some point, you know, if people actually care to care about it. So, and they're kind of arranged based on the day and rough location. Um, PAX is a big area as we saw like this. No, no, not that. <laughs> That's a later thing. It's a big area, as you can see. It's kind of hard to narrow down exactly where I was at any given point in time. And so I'm just kind of stuck with vague things. And I will answer all the questions about the object on top of the jar of coins later. Anyway, starting at the top, Biomorph. Um, this looked cool. It's a Metroidvania game. It stars a cat. I do like cats. I do like Metroidvania games. And it has a demo, so we're going to try and play it. Part of the reason why it's listed as question mark. Let, I'll, let me put that down a little bit. Uh, maybe I need to just put it down for me. Let me know at any point if the audio is getting loud and obnoxious. Because um, I'm not the best at balancing audio. But the reason it's listed here is question marks. I don't remember where this actually was in physical space. So. But, you know, a morphing cat seems like a cool concept. I am willing to give this a shot. So, let me actually start that up. Part of the reason why this took so long to get started, by the way, was because I spent a while, like, making sure the audio wouldn't be terrible. Uh, where'd it go? There it is. Demo. Let us start that over. Pick up the correct one. This is the 720 version. There's so many of these. Let's see if this works. Please work. It works. Lovely. Okay. So Biomorph. This is a demo. Don't take it too seriously. Don't be dicks about it. It's basically what this says, and I don't blame them. Um, so now, actually, let me check something really quick. Yeah, I guess it's fine. Okay. Probably because it's right in my left ear. All right, there we go. Let's start the game. Start the actual game. I played for 17 seconds to balance things. That's basically it. So here we go. Biomorph. It appears dystopian. A cat frozen in a pyramid. That's always a good sign. A more different -er cat pyramid. Alright. like the animatic. Still kind of flash-ish, but not uh, in a bad way. Right? That told us nothing. Harlow is our name. Oh no, they've caught us. They're caught in a stasis field. We have to rescue them from this laboratory? What are we doing here? 
No idea where we are, and there's not much we can do from this side of the rubble. Boss, who are they anyway? I don't remember. Our priority should be escaping this place. We'll take care of the rescue effort once we're safe. Longface has a point, boss. No, we have to rescue them. We have to get in that room. Somehow. So yourself. Not like we have a, any other choice to follow you. Oh, and any? Stop calling me, Longface. Nope, let's go. Are you supposed to be hearing audio? Uh, yes. Is there no audio? There was audio a minute ago. Oh, it's really low. Um, so hard to do this stuff offline. How you doing, Kappa? All right, I'm going to raise this a bit. To eight, nine. Hopefully that doesn't break anything. Okay, how about this? The part of the problem is, like, I have, like... 14 demos, and it's really hard to balance for all of them. Um, so I, I I think I may have skimped a little bit here on this one. Let me know if it gets better or worse, please, because, again, this is not a field I'm very talented in, video production. Oh, well, that was a splashy thing. Oh, I can't hear audio now because I took the cord out of my face. Ah, okay. There we go. But, yeah, I ran it a bit low, because an awful lot of them run a bit high. And this was one that was running a bit high. Oh, wait, actually, that's how I should have solved the problem. I should have just gone to the game and fixed it. Um, okay, he's got wall jumps. Do we have a map? Nope, we have a picture of him. Bunch of different things I don't care about yet, but no map. Still very quiet? Okay. Here, I'll fix it inside the game. Hopefully this will help a little bit. No, not game. Audio. I'll bump it up two notches each, and hopefully that'll solve the problem. It's definitely louder in my ear now. I can turn it into a blob. That's kind of cool. Um, I guess I can see the results here if I do this. Right, okay. Yeah, it's closer to where it should be, I think. I'll have to keep that in mind for the rest of these. Chip obtained. The bruisers... Level 1, launch a melee attack, can be done in quick succession and in multiple directions. Level 2, attack increased. The Executioner, fires ranged Ferox bullets at enemies. What this, what's a Ferox? Cooldown reduction, reduced. A new chip has been added to the game menu. To activate the full power of a chip, you need to equip it. Press this button at any safe. I am not pressing any buttons. That was neat. Forget that. Forget neat, that was awesome. Seems we turned into fists. Quite handy. Oh, those are his hands. Who cares about tentacalities? I want to punch something, boss. Let's punch something, anything. Pretty please? I'm not going to punch things just to... Oh, chances are we'll punch our way out of here anyway. So why not? Okay, so X does that. Y does this. Definite improvement? Okay. Yeah, I might just want to raise the level for all the games then. Trying to do it by eyeball in OBS is not fun. One of these days, I'll actually learn how to do this properly. Yeah, I can punch things. I enjoy punching things in Metroidvania games. I can still bring it up a little bit if you think it's a good idea. Um, I probably will need to rethink how I've handled this. Okay, it actually auto-aims for you if you're in range. That's interesting. It's one of those things about diagonals in Metroidvania... It's frequently difficult to actually get your angles to work out, so I kind of appreciate it, but I also think it lowers the skill ceiling a bit. I'm not sure. One of the things I don't know how I feel about it. What is that? Can we use it? Yes. It opens blast doors to the room they're in. I'm sure of it. But what makes you sure? Have any idea how to interface with this? Call it a gut feeling or whatever. We'll figure something out. Isn't that right, boss? Boss? Harlow? Uh, guys, I feel weird. Like, fingers poking around inside my head and... Well, that's purple. I'm... Okay. A little louder wouldn't hurt. Okay. Alright, after the animatic. Because I don't... Actually, I guess it doesn't matter. I can see the animatic regardless. Oh, no, I can't! No, 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 no! If I tab out, the animatic goes. So let's not do that. That would be really bad.
That ship has a lot of orbs. I don't think I like this ship. What's up, McKenna? How you doing? We're playing a demo of a game I didn't actually play at PAX. And trying to adjust audio things correctly, which has proven to be a challenge. Okay, quick. I'm going to change this up to 7-7? Seven, 7-8. Seven, seven, and hopefully that's loud. Could be better annoying cold. Could be worse. Yeah, a Thousand Year Door remake. Something to look forward to. A lot of good stuff in that Nintendo Direct today. Honestly, overshadows everything I saw at the live. All right. Hurry up, Harlow! Still not quite certain how I got from the room I was in to this room. That was close. Nice dodge, Kilo. Thanks. No place to talk. You remember the plan? Yes, but... They're intelligent. Surely we can come to an agreement and work something out. Elos is a big planet. They're invaders. Don't even consider us people. In their eyes, we're scary blue nightmares to get rid of. Yeah, that's fair. They refused any attempt to make, uh, we made to seek, speak this out. They don't want any solution other than their own. And their solution is extermination. There's gotta be another way. Come on, Harlow. Don't make me do this alone. I need your help. Please. Also, I realized I may have forgotten to do something. I'm going to get up and take care of that really quick because it's really silly and I should do it. I'll be right back. Um, yeah, maybe we already read that. Oh, what's up, Pablo Luta? How you doing? You haven't missed much yet. I figured I'd start off with a demo, one of the demos I didn't get to play. It seems very sensible. Um... What can't he do alone? Maybe it's this big door I should enter. The really big, obvious door that I walked past. Oh, okay, so he's remembering things. Cleo. Their name was Cleo. Oh, what was that? Some sort of memory fragment? So Cleo, eh? We have a name now. And your memory is coming back. Good news all around. Still doesn't answer what this place is, or what's going on. From your recollection, this appears to be a spaceship. A spaceship in quite sorry state, I must add. Must have come down from the sky and landed on you, and Cleo broke in, fu broke in to fight them. And somehow you got frozen and then unfrozen, and then ah, that's all I got. Where'd they go? Did we win? If you don't know, boss, I'm 100% certain Cleo knows. We gotta rescue him. Okay. Seems wise. Getting Hollow Knight art vi uh, vibes, like the Earth Yeah, it's been cool so far. It has some nice animatics. Um... And I dig the basic concept. Huh? Oh, yes! Time to do the thing, boss! I did say we'd have to punch our way out of here. I am happier now that I've punched things. We'll say I think the physics are a little bit off, but that's not a humongous complaint. Uh, down an X, okay. Good old down punch. Steel? Wait, what? Steal vital enemies. Energy by hitting enemies? Press R button to heal yourself. Okay. That's an a right bumper. Interesting mechanic. Oh, hello. Man, I probably should have read that message that it said right there. Press, uh, to dodge. Which button is that? Oh, right trigger. Okay. I have regrets about how I handled this. Alright, I get it. Ooh, boy, animatic. I beat up the cone chicken. That was pretty awesome. Okay, analyze the cone chicken. We can now... absorb and become the cone chicken? I guess that's what's happening. I am a cone chicken now. This is fine. 
Um, I'm not controlling this. All right. Yeah. I feel like smashing my head into the nearest wall. Did we just turn into a Torloaf? You did that, Harlow, but how? Did you copy its genetic code to morph into a Torloaf? Have I done that before? Not from what I know, but it's a real useful skill to have, have and the way out is blocked, so you may want to turn back into a Torloaf. The rock-hard crest could be, prove useful. So weird going from two eyes to four, and then back to two again. Okay, Biomorph. Title drop. Uh, use LB to take their shape. You can now use their unique skills. Press LB again. Be uh, beware by biomorphing enemies you can learn new behaviors and gain new attacks and grow stronger. Is that beware? That sounds awesome. When you biomorph into a monster, it is added to the game menu. Biomorphing different monsters of the same type a number of times will give you its power permanently. Track your progress by pressing the social button. Ah, oh, okay. When you kill it, then you can do this. Toroth. Radiations... Radiation? Radiations. That, that should be an apostrophe if you're going to make it that way. Apostrophed, atrophied its arms and skull. Their brain did not shrink and now pushes against their cranium. They have constant. They have a constant migraine and charge at anything in hope of relieving the pain. When you biomorph enough monsters, you can use their skill by equipping them. Press this button at any safe. Once equipped, press L trigger to select monster and press L bumper to exit monster. Okay. Alright. Um, I guess I probably should stay as the cone chicken for the time being. I think I want that. I don't know what it is, but I want it. Gotta pick it up? Raw materials. A mix of the finest materials in Elos can be used to upgrade mementos. Uh, what I think is off about the physics, it's hard to describe. It's a little bit floatier than I think I'd want it to be, but it's not a bad thing. Like, it's kind of, you can tell that they're using an existing engine instead of a bespoke one. It's one of those things. Alright, so I found a way to exit my my morph. I also saw something down there that I was interested in. That wasn't it. Uh, why is there such tense music in here? Nothing's happening. Oh, it's one of these types of rooms. It's kind of reminiscent of Guacamelee. Where stuff just keeps spawning in, and you just have to kill it, and that's just how that part is. To be fair, I did like Guacamelee, so I'm not complaining. Really should have been smarter about how I handled this part. Yeah, I'm gonna get my ass handed to me by this thing. I've already beaten him once. I guess guacamelee comparisons might be happening because, you know, I am punching things to death with my bare fists. Which is not necessary, but enjoyable. Lorenium. A beautiful and rare material that shines brightly. That's pretty nifty. I guess it's going to have an up system more like Iconoclast, where you have to kind of pick what things you want to make, as opposed to just, you know, going for it. Um, that looks painful. We're not going that way. Unless... They want to become a big chicken. No. Let's see, do these things run off edges? No. Correct solution? Shoot in the butt repeatedly. I kind of wish I'd read the message about how you heal up better. Well, that was bad. Maybe these things jump better than I expect? Oh, I see. I see the game. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see the game. <laughs> Mistakes were made. Let's see what it does to me. Do I die permanently, or do I get to go back to, like, the last time I did something? Okay, so last time there was, like, plot. That's not unreasonable. It's so quiet now. Can I go down here? Yeah. 
Yep. Oh, I've already been here. What am I doing? Just notice the Trinidad and Tomato. <laughs> yep. I finally fixed the bug that was involved in that. Um, it was really dumb, and people definitely... When I explained how it worked last night, they gave me grief over it. Completely merited. Um, I forgot to escape ampersands. I do like that it tells you exactly how much, like, life it still has. I have, of course, chosen the wussy way out here. Punch! Right, I'm going up here this time. Interesting that the blocks are still gone, even though I had to come back for the save point. What's that thing? Arbor. Arbor. Ooh, hello. Give me that. Arboror. These creatures stitched together in the Sentinel Complex. At the moment of its creation, the three minds fight for control of the body. The winner takes over and the others fade into nothingness. Oh, you. He does punch nicely, though. Can I punch this thing when it's, like, in midair? Probably not. I don't know why I want to be this thing. It's slow and clunky. Can I... Nope, it just punches. I really don't want to be this thing. Wait, what? Oh, I, I dropped the biomorph, so I guess... To wait, Torth Shoe Magnet? Automatically retrieves nearby plaques. Range increase. What does this do? A new momentum has been added. Okay. I guess let's take a look. The other button. Mementos. Can all be done at a safe. All right, well, we're not safe right now, so I'm not going to worry about it. Um... Ah, oh, I see. I need that to punch that. But we're still gonna... Oh, should I go that way? Always questions of Metrovania. What direction should one go first? Play all the demos? Uh, presumably. There's I only there's fewer than you think. Um, I was meaning to share the spreadsheet in chat. And there's some I'm not going to play. Um, because I don't want to. <laughs> there's at least one game where, like, it, I played it, it had a demo, and I'm not interested in playing it again, and at least I'll talk about why. Um, and the answer is kind of, it just didn't really work for me. Oh yeah, I probably should just do the thing to avoid the dang cone chicken. Thought it was going to be a just chatting screen? Uh, nope. There are games to play, be played. I'm also better at playing games than I am at just talking, I guess. Do we trying to do both? Well, maybe not, I don't know. Oh no, we're locked in, we're going to die! The door can't be opened, it's not a door anymore, is it? Here go, there must be a door switch. What if there isn't? If it comes out of survival, I'm eating you first, Longface. What's up, Fries? Did you miss? Not much. Um, I literally just got started. I talked a little bit about, like, how this was going to work. Oh, I can change my arsenal. Oh, there's a switch. Knew that. I was calm all along. That was a test. Congratulations, you passed. So now I can equip my available... Wait, what? S save. If this isn't where I can save... Okay, there we go. I equipped it. I don't know what it does, but I equipped it. Let's see what the other things I have are. I got some chips. The chips are already equipped. I have inventory. I've got some random crap, but I guess that doesn't really matter. All right. Well, we'll leave this room now. Partly. <laughs> Never stop talking. Yes. I try not to. So I kind of expected the chicken to keep running at me. And that didn't work. Okay, chicken's gotten smart. This is a problem. But no, I've got I've got the sheet pulled up. I'll talk about some other stuff. And I do have like 10-ish demos, maybe a little bit more. That I have interest in playing. Oh. There we go. That's how I heal. It, was t it took me a long enough to figure that out. This way open now? Yep. That's... But also, it's just kind of like, if I'm going to talk about stuff at PAX, I mean, it just makes sense, I think, to also have the games pulled up. It's like, I mostly just played games. I looked at some demos, I played some demos. 
I do have some things to say about specific demos or meeting devs and things, so that's kind of the idea. Um, but I, I, one of the reasons why this started later than I anticipated was because it took me some time to try to do audio balancing, which didn't end up working at all, so... Mistakes were made. Alright, so I still get to keep that even though I died. That's kind of cool. Uh, just keep... No, I didn't. Um, I could have, but I, I didn't. Uh, he was at uh, impul the Impulse booth when I was there, and I could have met him, and I just spaced. I think I was busy, and he was in me playing the game. I didn't want to bug him. What's up, nerdy? How you doing? What game is this? It's called Biomorph. I played it at PAX. I didn't play it at PAX. I saw it at PAX. I thought it looked cool. I'm trying to play it now. Okay, what we've learned here... Can these things jump out of this? Yeah, but take some, take some space for them to jump out of it. Space I don't have. Boy's gonna be famous someday. Oh. I may not understand exactly. No, come on. Alright, maybe I'm bad at this. Yeah, I'm definitely bad at this. Okay, let's try this again from the other direction. Like, how soon can I jump after starting the charge move? Immediately. I think there's just less land there than I think there is. And yeah, you just stop midair. I'm not sure I feel about this move. Crap. Sub Zucati. Looked at chat at the wrong time. Okay, I think I understand how to do this. There we go. I'm not sure I dig the charge move. I also really can't see that, that all that well. Should I drop this? I think I should. I think I can make that jump without the charge. Let's find out. Yes, I can. And I got this thing. Vital module. Increases your maximum vital energy. Cool. That seems important. It also filled up my energy tank, which I really needed. Awesome, just downloaded AKX Auto. I do not know what that is, but it sounds awesome. Is it a blue critter with an AK-47? Oh crap. I can't make that jump. So we have to go back to being triangle chick or cone chicken. Tag nabbit. I think it's humongous. Okay, new plan. Figure out how to leave the room. Because you can't jump into those. They kill you. Maybe there's like a one-way over here somewhere? Ah, okay. Maybe I could have just hit that wall from the other side the whole time. Exactly. It's Kirby meets Hollow Knight. That sounds cute. Roguelike bullet hell. Okay, that's kind of cool. Yeah, there's a... I don't think I've seen any roguelike... I don't think there were any of my roguelike bullet hells in my uh, list, but I did find an interesting Japanese bullet hell, which is definitely going to be discussed. It is weird. Um, and the... Uh, man, I think I'm actually might have had a valid question given how long I've been playing this demo. Um, but... Um, yeah, I saw some little kids playing it and getting absolutely freaked out. It was awesome. What's up, Joe? That's how you doing. Roguelikes lost all meaning. That's fair. An awful lot of people just kind of use the term now to mean whatever. Some level of progression that happens between deaths. If at all. I don't need this. I don't, I don't need this. I don't know why I did that. Horror bullet hell? Yeah, I, it's, I, there's no demo, unfortunately. But it was still really cute. And that reminds me, I will share the spreadsheet I made. After the fact. It doesn't have any, like, personal opinion, but it does have links to everything. Um, as well as some other, like, just general info. That hurt. What I've learned is stay away from the big punchy man. 
also use my healing more often. Roguelite. Roguelike. Roguelike has no progression. That's true. And it's really easy to mix them up. I used... I used to... Well... Hmm. I'm stuck with this thing. Experiment 626. I can still gooify myself. That's good. Alright, it has a very simple pattern. Not that I want one I can exploit. I think what I do is wait for it to come down, punch it once or twice, drop this body for one that can move at a reasonable speed, and loop again. Heard my laser. Shotgun King, which is worth it. I think someone mentioned that to me once. Okay. Ah. Oh god. He's still charging his laser. I'm gonna heal myself while I have a cycle. Alright, so I understand now. I understand this now. This can also do some damage from underneath. Back up. Yeah, the gun is not very good. Oh, nuts. Oh, I got that just barely. Yeah, I played that not great, but it worked. It's a classic. For a reason. I think that means it's going to explode. Hard to say, though. And that's the end of the demo. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I took a lot of time. I died once. I obtained some money. I didn't biomorph all the critters. I could have biomorphed. Uh, oh, well. Uh, missed a logic block. Yeah, that was still cool, though. I can confirm that I did these things. Thank you for so much for playing my game. Uh, didn't find any bugs, but that was still fun. All right. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I, I like the morphing thing. Gives you an awful lot more opportunity than just, like, finding Metroid Crawl. End of demo. Is that Eldad Stream? I don't know. I don't know. All right, let's close that out and get back to the, the other half here. So here is the spreadsheet. Bam. We're done with Biomorph. We're done with Canyon Dominated. Uh, oh, all right. The next one also has a demo. Yeah, we'll see how that works. Um, I This is another one where, like, I had the card, and I don't remember if I looked at this all that hard. But it's an adventure game. Uh, no, I don't want someone else's stream. Thank you, game. Thank you, Twitch. Or Steam. But basically, it's an adventure game focused around eavesdropping on people in a hotel. Could be cool. Didn't play it. One more to your bingo card. You have a bingo card? I'm curious. She just said I'm curious. Anyway, it's thematically interesting. Like I said, I didn't play it. You can see on the spreadsheet, I did not play it. Decibels just tell me how to arrange things. They're all 11, uh, 1, which probably means they're all too quiet. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, let me set that up. There it is. This bed we made. I probably play less of it than I did the other one, I think. Um, no, I don't want to do that. All right, he's going to do this first. Give me a sec. It's going to have to do some... Uh, this might be working. There it is, it's working. 
Another game we need to work outside of regular work. Exactly. Um, this is a 721, so I just need to do this. Oh, this works so much better than it does on a Mac. It doesn't automatically select one, so I don't have to worry about showing you guys a window I don't want you guys seeing. End of demo was sometimes a bingo square in Eldad's stream where he plays Lola exit hacks from SMW in a row. That makes sense. Let me know if it's too quiet or too loud. I've amped the sound a bit from the last one, but I don't know how well I've done. Beth is a worldly woman who brings a keen sense of street smarts to her job from at the Clarington. It's no surprise that... Oh, I'm not going to read all that stuff. Imagine PC being better than Mac. I can capture the audio individually on the Mac. That's pretty awesome. I... Why would... Whee! I don't know why I want to spin this. After selection mode? I'm not sure how the children are affected by what goes on at a bar on a Friday night. But I'm no lieutenant, so... I feel like there might have been some setup that I didn't get seen. According to Susanna Nibet, wouldn't be surprised if everyone's a little bit more on edge today. Bad weather has a way of doing that. This is horrible. I don't think I'll ever understand what pushes people to go so far as killing. Uh, what's the spin button again? Oh! Stop worrying and save your... Oh, I want, I want to inspect the Lysol ad. That's clearly the thing I need to do. Huggle plain text. Oh, that's that's incredibly useful if you want to be able to read things. Wow, that's a nice feature. I'm not going to, but it's a nice feature. Now let's just put it back. Um, E. Oh, this is a quest. I feel bad bugging Beth about uh, while she was in the middle of an important phone call. But like always, she came through. The logbook says Mr. Spades in room 505. I was just in the middle of taking care of the fifth floor before my break. I can return the film roll and get back to my schedule. It's a nice PowerPoint slash. <laughs> That's adventure games for you. Oh, this this was probably the first part I should have read. Why did, why did it take me to the second part? All right, well, cleaning up a mess of the lobby, I just got a roll, uh, roll of film on the ground. I'm guessing whoever knocked over the vase must have dropped it. With Beth's help, maybe I can figure out who it belongs to and return to their room. We usually keep the lost items at the front desk, but bringing it back myself would only take a few minutes of my day and might put me a few steps closer to employee of the month. Ooh. All right, and then Q. Up to room 505. I'm sure Mr. Spade will be happy to get his film roll back. Guy this named Mr. Spade. so much fun. Well, for the guests, at least. Whee! This was a feature in Phantasmagoria 1 as well. I don't know why it was, but I had a lot of fun with it when I played that game. Let's see, what else? This is an inspecting thing. Linda's been putting these everywhere. Say no to divorce. It's weird Issued by the DOC. Office. Divorce Oversight Committee. Very 1950s. Oh, I thought that was a mirror for a minute. All right. I said, we're not probably not going to play this one to completion, but we'll take a quick look. I like the theming. Mr. Spade. He's not a PI. I'm going to eat a hat. Mr. Spade. And that's really safe. Okay. Oh, he's set up a green a green room, a, bl a dark room in the bathroom. Interesting. Straight up getting a slideshow. Oh shit! You have a valid point. It is not capturing well. I don't know why. It looks okay on my side. That might be a good reason to not play the rest of the demo. Um, yeah, I thought you were talking about just the concept of an adventure game, not the actual quality. I don't know why it's doing that. I'm using game capture. Maybe it's switched to window capture. Tampering with objects may lead to negative consequences. Good to know. Those might be me. Can I go to the menu? Options. Let's see what we can do here. Video. 
Uh, quality, low. Screen resolution's already kind of low. Uh, motion blur, oh, please turn that off. It's enough motion blur for me today. OBS, please. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised. This doesn't seem like it's... This looks better? I have to wait for uh, it to catch up. Wait, what? Um, this is odd. Apparently, my video is buffering. All right, well, let me check something really quick. Right, I'm curious if this is affecting, like, everything. Like, is moving the mouse around Firefox? Is that a thing that's happening? Oh, God, I've like, got a 10 second, late, 10, uh, 10 seconds latency, dude. I'm gonna, uh, pulse OBS really quick and see if that's gonna help. I don't think it's actually, like, CPU. My CPU is fine. Um, it looks like Ethernet's fine, too. Yeah, we're bouncing, but, like, this, this looks okay. Alright, try this. Oh, please don't crash! Okay, well, like, it looks like it says it, it says that I'm getting good quality over there. Like, OBS is clearly re recording good things. That, oh, that looks better. That looks better. I think. Yeah, I think I just had to pulse OBS. Woo, look at it go. Okay. Cool. Let's let's continue investigating. What is this? At least it's working fine on my end and through my OBS viewer. Or not OBS, through the uh, Twitch viewer now. So yeah, thank you for informing me. I, I definitely misunderstood what was what you're complaint was. I feel a little bit dumb in retrospect. Alright, so I see... I see candy, maybe? Adulterating a perfume bottle? Something's going on. I'm cleaning. Should I clean? Hold to clean. Ooh, look at me clean. I, I don't know why I'm doing this. In fact, this seems like an actively bad idea. Like, this guy's gonna get pissed off at me that I cleaned up in his room. Okay, well, that's a thing that happened. Uh, plain text. Keep bottle tightly closed. Photographic fine grain developer. You know, I'm gonna leave it alone. This is weird. I should bring that back to my cart. I would be pissed off if I came back and had no towel. And I just cleaned the bath. Oh, it's a mug. It's got a stain in it. Which is expected of mugs. Looks like prescription drugs. But what are they for exactly? Um, Federal law prohibits dispensing this without a prescription. Huh, I don't know what that is. Why are so many games another job? This actually infuriates you. Yeah, one of the things I saw in the expo floor uh was actually oh god this is really just cleaning simulator i thought it was a back to the future game and i was really excited and then i read the actual text of it and as i was doing this the exhibitor came over to talk to me and i was like oh he's like yeah isn't it great i'm like yeah i read it first and i was excited and then i realized no it's power washing simulator not another back to the future game um 
Like, at least most of the adventure games that have a, uh, an interesting premise set you up as a more interesting character than a maid. How curious protagonists of adventure games are. Curious and kleptomaniacs. Does Graham really need a shoe? Hotel reception desk, Beth speaking. What can I do for you on this very fine day? You still pick it up. Um, I, I don't know who Andrew is. Beth, I need your help. Sophie? What's going on? I, I think Mr. Spade's stalking me while I work. Really? I knew it! You did? I mean, I knew there was something fishy about him. He just has creep written all over his face, you know? How did you find out? Uh... He took pictures of me. I... I found them hanging over the bathtub. He set up a kind of... dark room. Pictures of you? Doing what? Um... I can't believe I'm about to say this, but... Sometimes... when I clean the rooms... Ooh. I... get a little curious. And, um... You know... Snoop through our guest stuff. Sneaky. And Mr. Spade caught you in the act, I suppose? Yes. I think... I think we should call the police. No, I think you should stop snooping around. Idea. But... Sophie, that man has pictures of you running your hands through people's stuff. But I didn't steal anything. I was just snooping, I swear. I know, I know, but... Say a client reports something missing. Those pictures would put a big red target on your back. That's creepy. Upper class Pat looking down on his computer at the working class. I'm just saying adventure game protagonists tend to have more g glorious things. King Graham's a king. Oh, you know what? Actually, Space Quest. Uh, Roger Wilco's a janitor in most of them, except the one where he's a starship captain. And then gets demoted back to janitor in the next one. Um... I was actually thinking more like Laura Bow, Laura Bow 2, where you're a uh, investigative journalist. And interesting things happened. Um, but shouldn't I warn someone? What if that man's dangerous? Moving as usual, me. indeed. Stalkers often bark more than they bite. You've been stalked before? I'm pretty sure it's part of the female experience to Oof. have at least one insufferable encounter with a creep. I mean, I don't think it's ever happened to me before. Well, I guess you're part of the club now. Unfortunately, being a creep isn't a crime in the eyes of the law, so you'd best keep it on the down low. And keep your eyes open. Um. You want me to keep digging around? Well, there are pictures of you snooping. So why stop now? Beth? Oh, we'll loosen up a Wait, little. what? No one's dead. <laughs> Any idea where I should start then? That's well, interesting. Now that I think about it, Pretty sure I remember Mr. Spade asking for the combination to his room safe. I bet that's where the good stuff is. Maybe, but I don't have the code. Mm, give me a minute. I'm actually surprised here. Well, the, those idiots. What? They can't find the combination list. The night staff's probably lost it again. Anyway. We oh, is that what's happening? Write down their code somewhere so they don't have to call reception a dozen times. Maybe you can have a look around the room, and I call you if Mr. Creep comes back. You know, so you can get out of there in time. Okay, this okay. is weird. Yeah. But oh, I think I know what's going on. Oh, it's nothing. Maybe. Oh, and Beth. Mm -hmm. Please keep this between us. Of course. Now we'll see what happens. All right. Well, oh, maybe do that. That'll help. Just don't look at it. Maybe it'll go away. Um. Oh, come on now. Yeah, I think that actually helps. I think the problem was I was looking at the preview while I was doing this, which I'll just need to stop doing. Oh boy! What do we have here? God, why has everything got to be filtered? Special occasion, wedding, funeral. I just visited the oratory for the first time in years. 
This has to be a coincidence, right? Maybe. Beaver Lake? That's where I took mom's kitty in last month. Hmm. Why is this up here? All right. Um, this is interesting, but I don't think I really want to proceed anymore. Like, I'm kind of curious as to why the cleaning element. I like the setting, but I don't think I want to play more of this right now. It's snowing. I think we're done. I'm also a little bit worried about the encoding stuff. Encoding seems to be going weirdly locally, which is strange to me. So let's quit. Kind of interesting, but eh. I get the feeling it kind of drops you in without doing the full thing. And also, I probably should have upgraded my graphics driver since I was complaining about that. That might have been one of the problems I was having. Um, it still says no drop frame, so I think we're still doing fine, but I'm a little bit worried. We'll see how it actually plays out. Um, let me pull up Firefox again. So here we go. Now, now we're not doing demos for a little bit. Um, so we're done with this bed. Uh, so here we go. Here's something interesting. So no, that's not it. Why do I keep clicking the wrong images? Why is Firefox tab management so weird? Um, so here's something interesting. So basically there was one part, I think it was here, PM Studios. No, maybe I was, I'm wrong. Um, that basically every single game they had looked both incredibly anime and was a Metroidvania. And in fact, here is the booth. I didn't take this picture, but this is the booth. All anime, all Metroidvania. It was quite something. And there were a few I played there that did look kind of cool. Um, this one, what was this one? This one, is this the one that was like the part of Live Live or something? Yeah, Love Live Sunshine. I cannot believe that this has spawned a Metroidvania game. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be about high school idols. I'm not exactly sure. Um, I have not done Anton, no. Oh, what's up, Louie? How you doing? Um, but yeah, so the basic premise is, is you get your abilities through like spawning other people. I played this, for, I think I played this for a few minutes, or if not, I watch it for a few minutes. It looked cute. Love Live is, yeah, this looks kind of cheap. I mean, most of these games are in this exact style. But yeah, Anime Metroidvania, good style so far. This seemed fun. Uh, let's see that the other one was Gal Guardians. Oh, wait. Yeah. Uh, this one is interesting because the premise here is a bit different. Pixel art cheap. Pixel art is not cheap. How you doing, Herosoft? I read your message. I didn't. And also, hey, Louie. Just in case. But basically, you have your melee girl and your gun girl. And you switch between the two. It's very Symphony of the Night-esque. Like, quite literally, if you told me this was a scene from Symphony of the Night minus the anime girl, I'd believe you. Walking around looks bad. One of the games you can get a panty and Of course you can. Well, I'm not terribly surprised. There's a lot of those. Uh, I'm not sure enough a lot of them show up at PAX, but yeah. Anime Vania area. This looked cool. I played it for a bit. I had fun with both of the characters. Uh, both Melee and Gun Girl. Um, I think kind of the gimmick here is you're going to need to switch between the two frequently because the Gun Girl runs out of ammunition. Um, and you regain ammunition over time or when swapped out or something. But I didn't play it long enough to really give a good accounting. Switch to Dark Souls. No. No Dark Souls. Alright. Let's see. Umber Claw. Did I play this one? I, I did not, no. Um, this one looked cool. It was part of the Anime Vania area. It, has, it stars a cat. I do like cats. Should look at the page for gun or gal gun. Uh, I think... Did I have that on my list? I don't know if that's in my list. But we, we have cats. It's Anime Vania. presents a new action revival. Cat from Sailor Moon. Oh, Tokyo Game Show's next week. Probably going, which is neat. Didn't expect to. Oh, that's cool. Good for you, Louie. I hope you have fun. First is the worst, and you're sticking to it. That's fair. Um, yeah, this looked cool. I didn't get to play it. Uh, and then finally, from the same group, Bloodstained. 
It was actually wasn't Curse of the Moon 2, but I think it was Curse of the Moon 2 that I played. They're releasing both of these in a bundle. So. I assume it's Tokyo Game Show. Um, but this this is Castlevania. I think it's even made by one of the Castlevania guys. In fact, I think this company was made by, like, ex-Capcom people to make Cap Castlevania games. I'm not really sure. This game is amazing. I, what I played was fun. I, I do own one of the Bloodstains. I did the Kickstarter a while ago, so I might have both of them. But what I played, I liked. I probably should actually go and keep track of all of the Kickstarter stuff I kickstarted and see if I've actually gotten all of it at some point. But yeah, this was cool. Eagles involved? That would not surprise me. Was that just it? Yes, it was. It was a booth for that. And in fact, the picture I got to show off the booth did come from their Twitter. Uh, but I couldn't actually locate it in the thing here, which was kind of annoying. Because I know it's around here somewhere, but also... the Oh, here it is. It's right here. Right under PM Studios. Um, but yeah, all of it. This and first, your uh, first uh, curse are your favorite. Okay. Played Ritual of the Night was all right. We like the music on the ship. Why can't they make Symphony of the Night 2? I don't know. But man, it would be great if they did. Um, that was cool. Um, oh man, this one. I, I, I looked at this one. So I think this is basically someone wanted to make Animal or uh, Animal Crossing, except it's on PC. I looked at this for a few minutes. I don't think I have much to say. I ended up with a card for it, and I might have just gotten the card because it was hot inside Arch, and I really wanted something to fan myself. But since I have a card, I'm going to say it. Maybe like some sort of cross between Mario Party? I don't know. It wasn't. They didn't account for themselves all that well. So the night two when you get to the inverted castle. Okay, this one's really interesting. Uh, I'm going to let you guys... I mean, so this is one of those that I still don't know exactly what's going on here. Every time I pass this booth, and I didn't get to play it, it does have a demo, though. Um, it looked weirder and weirder. It's supposed to be a text adventure game. I'm not sure how this is actually working. I don't exist, exactly. Inverted Castle? Oh, you're missing out. You are missing out. Um, Sympathy of the Night. Um, but yes, we're going to play this one next. It is not a mud. No, it is not. Um, I do, however, need to get up really quick. I, uh, I think I drank a bit too much water when I was hanging out with Snyder playing games earlier. A lot of game playing today. So, um, I will... Yeah, can I just... Uh, let's see. I don't want to, like, not have something on screen, but it'll stop and just rotate through these, and it's not ideal. Actually, that's fine enough. It'll rotate through these. I'll be right back. Yeah, definitely don't want to stand up too often. It takes a lot of time to detangle myself and retangle myself into this system. Okay. So let me get this set up now. Uh, where are you in the Steam list? I don't exist. I played this for all of like a few minutes to try and figure out the audio levels. If I end up blowing out anyone's speakers, I apologize because it's really hard to tell with this one. Um, this one is in the 1080 set. Okay. Boop. There we go. And to make sure Firefox doesn't start screaming at me, we do that. All right, so this is, in fact, the text adventure game. Um, that entire booth didn't really have enough. Like, it had, like, four or five stations, but this game only had one station. But you could see other people playing it. It was weird. So we're going to start her up. It's accurately going to simulate how long it took to load text adventure games off of floppy disks, which um, was apparently a long time. You usually just installed them from what I remember. They weren't that big. Hi there. I was wondering when you finally show up. I'll show you what I whipped up th for this time. So do you have something to uh, tuck back to me with? Somewhere? A controller? Keyboard? Anything? Key... Can I use caps lock? Keyboard! You're a natural. So this is the thing you control. It's pretty useless on its own, so it's going to need help. our help. Try... It out. Tell it to go to mushroom. Go mush room. Never had a doubt you wouldn't get anything else but fantastic. Next thing you want to do is get the key. Get key. Yes, good use of get key. Very creative. You are so talented. Very good. Now you have the key in your inventory. The next thing on the list is getting that key into the safe. You are pretty far away now, so you can simply walk left and then press enter when you want to stop. Give it a go. Something that bugs me. 
is that anyone who played a text adventure game with no inv is short for inventory. Every game Infocom ever made has this shortcut. Any game made in Inform, I'm pretty sure, has this shortcut. It's bizarre to me that this game does not. Anyway. Let's walk left. Look at safe. Look at safe. It's a safe with a combination lock. This door is slightly ajar and you can see it is currently empty. You'll feel like this would be perfect space to put a key. Put key in space. Er, safe. Good idea, I should try I. Got the hang of it. Now the key is safely stored away and you know how to use your commands. I think we can move on to the next thing. Let's get to the door and get out of this. I doesn't exist. Yep, no, that wasn't going to work. Um, let's get to the door. Go door. Don't worry, I'll be on the other side if you ever need help. You just tell me to come over to talk to you. I'll be right there for you. Anyways, here's the last thing to do. Open door and we're at... Uh, open door. Have something seriously amazing planned for us this time. So forget everything around you and enjoy the ride. And suddenly it changes. You are sitting in a small cavern. The cold stone floor stretches beneath your hands. From outside, warm gusts of wind blow into your face. Embedded in the cave wall, you see a safe with a combination lock, which you might be able to get a better look at. A, small, a note is taped just above the heavy safe door. You wonder what it reads. Read note. You get up on your feet and get a closer look at the note. The handwriting on it looks oddly familiar, but you can't quite make out where you've seen it before. You decide to read it and not make too much out of it. I have left the key in the safe for safekeeping. It's uh, the only way to get through the door east of here. It's time to leave this place. You squint your eyes, looking at the message. Not quite sure what it means yet. There has to be something around here that could help you. Look around. Your blurry vision fades and you can see clearly. The cold stone floor stretches beneath your feet. From outside, warm gusts of wind blow in your face. I have to admit, that was a, that was a snazzy effect. Mudding inside the mud. Not everything is a mud. Um, look safe. Ah. It's a safe with a combo lock. Look lock. Don't know the combination to find a lock and you'll need to find another way to open it. Please make sure you have a verb and an object. Th those are both things here. All right, well, go right. Oh, hey. Between the trees, a mushroom looks at you smiling. In the treetops, a lonely bucket swings back and forth. There are many objects beyond your current vision. Look, mushroom. <laughs> you ran a mud for a year? Oh, that's kind of cool. A little mushroom bobs up and down between the trees. You heard legends about mushrooms saying if you talk to them, they can bring guidance. Talk. Mush. Room. The mushroom happily stands at attention and invites you to speak the name of the object you're having trouble with. Uh, say safe. You can't see uh, the safe in your media surrounding. Talk. Mush. Safe. Or, uh, Lock. Face looks like it's crossing its arms. Sometimes you need to take chances in life, no matter what the repercussions. They don't know if that's helpful advice generally, but they know it will help you right now. Would you like to ask about something else? Uh, safe? They shake their head with disappointment. They don't know what the combination of the safe is either. Maybe strong hands will do the job. Okay. Nope. Uh, go left. Get bucket. Your fingers tap the bucket lightly, but not enough to bring it down. All right. Something heavy to throw. Go right. Get mushroom. You're just to pick up the little mushroom. They pipe up telling you to please leave them grounded. Okay. They already placed roots here, and that takes a lot of work. You respect their wish and leave them be. Go right. I'm curious. How was running a mud? Oh. Use, oh. Get nail? Get hammock. The fabric looks pretty heavy and you are not ready for that kind of a workout right now. You decide to leave it where it is. Okay, go right. 
look jukebox. The jukebox waits eagerly to play another song. Two massive screws guard its interior. You cannot loosen them with your bare hands. It might need a tool to do so. Use nail on jukebox. You press one of the blinking buttons and the jukebox whirs like a disturbed animal for a second. Your favorite tunes start playing from it. You notice your foot tapping lightly to it. It plays canyon.mid. Alright, well, let's keep going right. Maybe we'll find something useful. Through the trees, you can make out a door. Look, door. Open door. That didn't seem to do anything. Try the handle. You push and pull. Doesn't seem to be working. The door is locked and requires a key to open. There doesn't appear to be another way. Okay, go right. I'm not sure I like the movement mechanic. Mix. Oh, get cat. There is no point in taking the pillar. Besides, the cats don't look like they're the pick-me-up type. Pet cat. You gently rest a hand on one of the cat's heads for a second. Subtle as it may be, you swear you hear a purr. Ah. Go left. Off we go. Bigot fireplace waits to fulfill a purpose. A statue of two cats on a pillar sways its tail. There are more objects behind your current vision. Look. Fireplace. Some small embers remain at the base of the pit. Get embers. If you could find something flammable, you may be able to relight the fire. Ember does not exist. Um, look at machine. Matches and a bolt cutter safely behind a thin pane of glass. A vacant fireplace waits to fulfill its purpose. Upon closer inspection, you see the vending machine only sells one thing. Matches. You can also see bolt cutters firmly stuck between the glass and its products. Okay. Buy matches. You think the matches could really bring the heat. Too bad they are safely stored behind glass. Okay. Yep. Got When you have an option, you got to pet the cat. Go right. There's more stuff to the right. Um. Will I trip again? What's this? A screwdriver is frozen. Big block of ice. The statue of two cats on a pillar. So get screw driver. You pull at the handle, but your fingers slip. It completely stuck in the ice, which is stuck to the trees and stones. The heat will eventually melt the ice, but that'll take too long. You need to find another way. Okay, go right. Get log. It's heavy, but not too heavy to carry or throw. Bugs are busy crawling over the logs in the shed. There may be more objects beyond there. I now have log in my inventory. It's a small clearing with a shower. Use shower. You turn on the shower head for a second and water pours out and immediately gets sucked back through the drain. Take shower. If only you had something to stop doing that. Although it is important to stay clean and fresh, you gather now it's hardly the right time to take the shower. Who knows what's behind that door? It might even take... You might even be able to take a shower there. Oh well. Um, Alright, so I think probably the smart move at this point... The battery slot is empty, not powering anything at the moment. All right, I'm going to go safe. Um, actually, no, I want to go bucket. I'm glad I can go to objects because, man, going right and left sucks. Hmm. Row log at bucket. Seriously? Get bucket. Go along the side you can't do the bucket. You hit hard enough for it to fall, but not only the bucket has not only the bucket is wedged in the branches, a heavy anchor rushes down, sinking into the ground and blocking your way. Think about the glorious thing this bucket can hold. Marmalade, mayonnaise, soda, tears. The possibilities are endless. Bucket is now in your inventory. Go left. Anchor's still blocking my path. Well, I know now I look anchor? I'm pretty sure I need the bolt cutters to do this now. Anchor's a bit itself in the dirt when it fell down. It's extremely heavy and does not want to move free. You might have a better chance of dealing with the chain. Look, chain. I mean, there was that taskmaster task, which was collect as many tears as you can in a certain period of time. A bucket is not inappropriate, though no one actually did that well. Heavy chain hangs from the treetops cutting to the anchor. You will not be able to... You will, you will not be able to break it with your bare hands. If you can find something with more power, you might be able to set it free. Go to the other side, all right. Um, 
Get my log back. Um, so now I have a bucket. Uh, go shower. So I think what I want to do is use the shower. I think this is what we're going to do. I'm not sure it's going to work. But speaking of Taskmaster, this is a way to melt a block of ice, is by pouring water on it. Put bucket in shower. You put the bucket under the shower and fill it with cold water. You can imagine as many uses. Bucket filled with cold water is now in your inventory. Crap. Yep, we're even throwing potatoes can be entertaining. It's true. Use water on ice. Ice still gleams in the light. Perhaps you should try something warmer. Inventory. We only have nail, piece of wood, bucket. I forgot about the nail. Maybe I should see what to do about the nail. All right, well, let's check out the other stuff to the right. Oh, right, we already did this. Go right. Look. Clock. You concentrate on a smaller clock hand. You can see it moving so slightly. It's Big Brother seems like a better choice, though. You don't feel the need to wait until you can take this one down as well. You get the clock. You look at the clock. You look at your inventory. You look back at the clock. You realize the clock won't fit. Move hands. Oh, um, hmm. Go right. Nope, that's it. Bucket. Been watching Taskmaster every week on YouTube as they release them, about two seasons behind. That sounds right. I've been watching it too. I'm not sure I like the last season all that much, but prior seasons are pretty good. Next season could be a lot of fun too. Okay, I think I just need the matches. I think that's really the solution here. Oh, um, put bucket on fireplace. Apparently not. Go machine. Look, matches. You think those matches could really bring the heat? Too bad they're safely stored behind the glass. Break glass. That worked. Telling your psycho, you raise your arm up, nail in hand, and bring it down onto the glass. Shards fly on the machine. Both matches and bolt cutter are now within your reach. Get matches. Get cutter. Oh, uh, carefully pull out the blocks. Okay, matches in my inventory. Pick up the bolt cutter. Snapping it a few times before you put it in inventory. Go fire. Look, fire. If you can find something flammable, all right, put log on fire. Pretty happy with how it looks. Now all you need to do is light it. Light matches. With a swift stroke along the rough side of the matchbox, you light one of the matches. Your face warms as you watch the fire catch the log. The campfire is ready for use. Put bucket on campfire. Put the bucket over the campfire. You watch it intently, but the water won't boil. You look up at the trees, and in this second, you hear the bubbles rise from the now boiling pot. You take the bucket from the hangar, which is now filled with hot water. Go ice. Put... Water on ice. With gusto, you splash the hot water from your bucket onto the ice. With a hiss, a little steam, a cloud rises, giving you an unpropter skin treatment. After a few blinks, you see the screwdriver is now resting freely in the wet stone. Get the screwdriver. Go juke box. On the bright side, my typing isn't terrible. I was kind of worried that, like, having people watch me type would be a problem. Because, like, people, when people are watching over your shoulder, I tend to be worse at typing. Use screwdriver on jukebox. Um, but this isn't quite the same feeling, apparently, even though I know people are watching. Uh, tool in hand, you loosen the screws on the side of the jukebox in the compartment. You see a big battery. Get battery. You remove the big, but very light battery out of its socket, leaving an empty space. The battery is now in my invitation. Go clock. Okay, so I've... Yes, I know it's creepy. 
Can I push up to do the same thing? Oh, I can! Oh, lovely. That's another nice thing in case you have to repeat an action. I want to say that in Beyond Zork, there was actually a button to repeat action. Okay, uh, go wires. Go left. Go left. Uh, put batter in slot. You put the battery into the slot, it powers the adjacent clock. The large clock hand moves a bit until it stops again. Seemingly stuck in position, very convenient, as you can now take it down. Take it now. Get clock hand. Okay, go anchor. It's a sturdy piece of metal that can be used to pry something open with some force. Clock hand is now in your inventory. All right, we know how to get into the safe now. Um, yeah, I kind of like this. It's weird. Initially, I thought that the moving back and forth and having to stop would really bug me, but once you know the names of things... Cut chain with bolt... Bolt cutters. Okay, go safe. You cut out the... You're still dripping with some of the molten ice. Wait, what? You take out the bolt cutter still dripping in some of the molten ice. Why is the bolt cutter dripping with molten ice? It's the screwdriver that's dripping with molten ice. With ease, you cut through the chain, which tumbles down to the ground. The path to the cave is now clear. Pry safe with hand. Using the clock hand as a lever, even your little arms are able to pry open the safe door with a little bit of force. Inside, you see the key, which is now within your reach. Get a key. You pick up the key and hold it in your hands. You brush some of the dust off, revealing a small engraving of a door. The key is now in your inventory. Go door! Go door! Use key on door. Oh, I guess. We're doing this. I'm liking this game less now. No! I can't. You always do this. You always make me leave. I don't want to leave. I'm so sick of being controlled by you. This, this is what I have to deal with when you're not around. When you're not playing some stupid game with me. All you want me to do is be numb or gone. I can't. You can't run away from me anymore. Uh, deal with... No, I, no, no, I cannot actually type. Oh, uh, that's the end of the beta. Well, that was something. Yeah, that was cool. I like that. Quite. And thanks to the GG. That was fun. Yeah, that one. I think I definitely want to play that one in the future. All right. These were all in the same sort of basic area. Uh, this one elsewhere, but these two were in the same area, the same publishers or something. They didn't have cards, which was annoying. But this is a dating sim of Eldritch Horrors and an adventure game. And I like adventure games. Eldritch Horrors? Eh. Deal with anxiety. That would have been a good way to phrase it. Uh, but we're going to try this. It's half visual novel, half adventure game. I didn't realize it had an over-adrenalized anime intro. But that's a thing that happens sometimes. This is not helpful. <laughs> um, this was not my experience playing the game either. But you know, I appreciate the effort put into it. We also aren't going to see this in the actual, you know, gameplay. All right, that's as good of a place to step off that as there is. Let me get this other one started. And pray OBS is still happy. Which kind was this again? Please start. Baka baka. Okay, this is 720. XP. I... Positively spooky. We're getting there. We're getting there. Alright. That one, and this should just work. Alright, here we go. Extra anime Scott Pilgrim. <laughs> Uh, the thousand versus the one. Eldritch gods. Cosmic. I don't have to read for this one. Things beyond our understanding. To merely gaze upon their form is to abandon all hope. Also, I've been through a couple more games. Is the audio still at a reasonable level? They are sequestered. I tried. To the stars, appearing Not good at this. Through challenging, failure-prone rituals. 
and unutterable incantations. Their twisted, fanatical followers require no such invitation to commit horrors beyond belief in their stead. It is then when the boogeyman lurking in the shadows is in an obscure, imperceptible shade, but a tangible madman. That the vague prognostications of the stars become Ooh, prognostications. before the undeniably material. The simple hatchet in their hands. I think I skipped over this when I played the, the demo. Scary happen? She looks like the protagonist of Amphibia. In the book you're reading, did something scary happen? You're as pale as a sheep. Oh no, no, I must have nodded off and had a bad dream. I know this is a super weird question, but can you tell me where I am? You're in my bookstore in Sacramento. Are you lost? Sacramento? Oh no, I think I know where I am now. Thanks. I'm getting strange dreams lately. I can't make sense of them, of what they've been about. But when I wake up, my heart is pounding out of my chest. And I'm not where I fell asleep. These dreams started happening at the same time as the people began vanishing from my hometown. Sacramento. Japanifornia, yep. Even though it's a fairly remote town with a small population, there's been dozens of disappearances in the last year alone. So many that trains don't stop at the station anymore. Concerned locals claim to have spotted many angry woodland spirits at the edge of the woods. Animals with too many features watching them. And outsiders can't shake the feeling that they're always being watched by the unblinking purple eyes of the townsfolk. The Sacramento Stare is what they call it on the news. They're saying the stare is how they can tell if you're an outsider at a glance. If you don't have it, they know you're not one of them. Oddly enough, I don't have the Sacramento stare, despite being born here. Even now, after returning home, I've still been spared from it. Besides some lightheadedness and a dull warm fuzzies feeling, I don't feel any different. The girl that runs this odd bookstore also hasn't been cursed, it seems. Um, have you made a selection? Oh, oops. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to loiter. To be honest, I don't have any money with me. But I'll come back first thing tomorrow and buy something. No, no, it's fine. I'm glad that you enjoyed reading my books, but it's starting to get dark outside. With all the disappearances lately, you better hurry home. Oh, what's up, McCampbell? How you doing? I might have said that earlier, but... Uh... It's a lot of games. Home. Even though my family fled town when the disappearances began, I'm returning to our ancestral home in Sacramento. All because of the note I found in my apartment this morning. Your mother is a little shook up from everything that happened, so I'm taking care of her at Graham Graham uh, Ikane, in Ikande's place. If you come to visit, it would cheer her up and help her recovery. We've missed you so, so much, Stardust. Oh, been here, I've been chatting much, fair enough. But the strange thing is, my parents were two of the first people to go missing. They were declared dead since they'd been missing more than a year amongst the disappearances. This is their handwriting, and my parents are the only ones that call me Stardust. This is them, beyond the shadow of a doubt. Whatever is going on here, I can't turn my back. I need to see them again. Speaking of, I better get going. Thanks for letting me doze off. I promise I'll come back real soon. Thanks for stopping in. Take care. Shiny glasses are always a bad sign. Time to hurry back. I push my way through the door, leaving the warm glow of the bookstore behind as the sun sets. I just noticed that her fingernail polish is the same kind of color purple as the, the dot here. It's a nice touch. Sacramento, overgrown now by oppressive canopies of foliage. From the smell of animal, animal musk and swampy fields, you'd think this was a barn, not a city street. Every surface here is plastered with posters. Many litter the ground, and every single one is of someone who was never found. That's why they call it Missing Person Lane now. It's where the desperate out-of-towners look for their loved ones. Uh, looking for their loved ones leave posters before going missing themselves. It's the only navigatable footpath left, and the most direct route to my house. I can't tell if the darkness is playing tricks on me, or what, but I'm losing my way down the streets that I know, forwards and back. Wasn't I supposed to make a turn a while ago? I can't make heads or tails of the houses and landmarks I used to use as a kid to get around. It's like my whole hometown was replaced by an unfamiliar, yet exact replica. Okay, clam down. If I check the note my parents wrote, and compare the address number to the nearest house, I should be able to at least figure out if I'm walking the right way. Dot dot dot. A blank grocery store receipt. When did I put this in my pocket? Where's my parents' letter? I dig through my pockets in a panic. There's no way I dropped it in the bookstore, so where could it have been? This receipt, it has the same fold lines and dimensions as the handwritten note I had. 
could I have? No, there's no way I could have misread a shopping list as an entire letter from my parents, right? I fumble around with the note, checking back and flipping it and turning it in a hopeless attempt to see the message again. But the receipt sell stays a receipt. Something is very wrong. I turn to run. Ow! Are you, like, blind or something? Watch where you're going, Klotorama! I slammed right into somebody coming the other way. Oh, I'm sorry, are you alright? I should have been more careful. Oh, she's really pretty. But what on earth is this girl doing wandering around Sacramento at night? Don't touch me. Sorry, I didn't mean to smack into you like that. I know it's not an excuse, but I was just in a rush. Oh yeah, I know. You gotta go run off and steal my boyfriend, right? Yeah, it's whatever. Totally cool. Save your breath. I already know how this goes. Wait, huh? Your, your boyfriend? Yeah. You heard me. My boyfriend. Buck is mine. Who the heck is Buck? Where are all these accusations coming from? I don't know anyone named Buck. Huh? <laughs> really? You don't know who Buck is? No, I don't know who the Bucky is. You're not, like, from out of town, are you? The stare. It's real. I turn my head down and briskly walk past her. She starts walking alongside me. Hey, look at me. I can't let her see my eyes, no matter what. She'll notice I don't have the Sacramento stare. You can tell me. <laughs> Are you from here, or what? I live here. Oh yeah? Look at me really quick. This is bad. You have to make it home. She'll know where I live. What do I do? Jump scare! I freeze. Before I know it, I'm already staring straight at her. <laughs> Bucky, hi. Got another one for you at Missing Person Lane. I break into a mad dash, running my hardest. Everything is a blur. My heart pounding in my ears. I can't dull the sounds of whistles, shouts, and unidentified commotion. Unidentifiable commotion coming from all sides. Panting and dizzy, I feel my body slowing down. But the image of my face on the next missing persons posters kick my leg into action once more. But no matter how far I run, the buildings refuse to change, the street refuses to turn, and the sounds of the awakening woods refuse to abate. This is truly hopeless. There's a wide open clearing in the trees about one block ahead. If I can break line of sight from my unseen pursuers, I have a chance of finding some place to hide. As I near the turnoff, my exhaustion makes itself known. If this is a dead end, or it's too dark to find my way, I won't have the energy to turn around and start running again. I round the corner. It's my grandma's house, sitting alone in the middle of a clearing in the woods. I thought the way to my house involved multiple turns a ways back, but I don't have time to question things. I'm already halfway to the makeshift dirt path. I, I skulk open... I skulk open... Skulk open up the open lawn. Okay, my grandfather's parents' old house. Burst through the door and hold the door shut for what feels like forever. No one's banging on the door. For a moment, I'm not being chased. Ah, oh, hey, what's? I may just be standing at the entrance, but I can already tell something feels off about my home. Like the warm, familiar place I grew up is long gone. I can't put my finger on it, but this dread. Why do I feel like I need to stick around my own home? Is someone here? My parents? Hello? I'm home! No response. Hello? Find your upstairs bedroom! Open door! And then go through door. Or don't go through door! I probably should stop ignoring the map because it's going to be annoying! Alright, so this game is a point-and-click adventure game where you can rotate the camera. I like this sort of thing, honestly. I dash out the door and flee from the house. If I can escape from Sacramento, I can tell everyone what's been happening. I sprint back through Missing Person Lane, unable to shake the feeling of an unseen pursuer just past the tree line. But no matter how far I run, the buildings refuse to change. Time and time again, I arrive at my old house. It's as if my house was in the middle of a non-Euclidean labyrinth. As soon as I lose sight of it, I happen upon it again. Even when my path certainly... Uh, certainly puts distance between me and my house. I cannot get free of its strange clutches. I won't be able to escape these darn woods until these darn woods are banished. I cross the threshold with rekindled determination. Yep, Resident Evil type house. 
It is a spooky house. I get a little bit of the Uzumaki vibes here, which is kind of nice. Dude writes a good, like, town that's creepy as all hell. Our family photos. Only none of these photos have me in it. And the face of my siblings look unfamiliar. What's with the strange symbols? I want the bucket. Also the map. The map is cute. I need to not get turned around because you don't see the direction you're... Oh, you do see the direction you're facing. That's kind of cool. Let's go east, or west. A navigable new, uh, woods around a house, yep. There is something about having to open every door manually that I kind of like. It's just a little bit weird. I'm gonna keep going. The birdcage, my gram gram kept her finches. It's been destroyed from the inside. Those finches are pretty badass then, aren't they? The blood in the bowl is other an otherworldly color. I'm a bit relieved it's not human blood, but then what's in all these bags? Fresh, dripping meat. I should avoid counting the number of legs. You know after that sort of message. Oh hey, hello. That is this growth is not investigatable? Aw. Oh. Well, I guess they have to give some feeling. Let's see. Usually pungent spices. Pepper, nutmeg, gin ginger, cinnamon, to name a few I see. The air is almost suffocatingly thick with their scent. Looks like cooking oil, except it's in a gallon container, and it smells like burnt hair and sulfur. The color is black as soot, too. Oh, we have to open the fridge. What? What's that terrible smell coming from the fridge? I can't bear to open it. Oh, no, you have to. We're not going to be able to open it. What a bummer. It's a calendar. The calendar strikes me as something I probably would want to look at if I was investigating this place. But, alas, there's only so much we can do. It will leap out at me later. Oh, probably. Whole fridge just kind of goes. Um, What direction am I facing? I wanted to go this way. Actually, having the whole fridge jump out at you would be pretty badass in terms of a jump scare. I didn't know we even had this many futons. Why are there so many beds out? I know what you want me to do, game, but I refuse to do it. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't really look worldly outside. Inspect. Oh, never mind. I guess there's just nothing in here. Alright, we've traversed this entire floor area. Yes, I know you want me to go that way. Fine. Or wait, did we? We didn't do this room yet. Oh, we definitely didn't do this room. What a mess. Clots have been ransacked, but no valuables have been taken. What? No. Ingawa. Huh. That must be the name of a room that I don't know what it means. Looks like the triplets' toys have been mostly untouched ever since we left in a hurry. Okay. Well, that is a... Oh, look at the cat pillow! That's a cute cat pillow. I kind of bet that's actually a licensed thing. Alright, we'll investigate this room. After we look in this room. There's nothing in this room. Ah, I'm playing in windowed mode for simplicity's sake, but it's probably making it worse for me, because when I rotate I take my cursor out, this, out of the screen. So it'd be nice if it captured the cursor, but honestly I'd probably be more annoyed at it. There's a lot more on the first floor, but I think we're going to go up the stairs now like the game wants me to. Because I'm looking at the time and I'm like, if I want to get through more of these, I probably should be a little faster. <laughs> as much fun as it is to just play whatever. I don't want to have a, have a sequel to this stream. Alright, 
Let's go to her room and do the thing. I think her room's the lit one. Nope, off by one. Got a star on it. Wait. The handle doesn't match. It doesn't match at all. That act actually bugs me. What the heck happened to my room? All this occult stuff is just sitting around. Has someone been living while here while I was away? Those candles are lit. Whoever did this was here recently. But who and why? Maybe there's some sort of clue in this convenient occult book. There's no title or anything, but it smells like overripe fruit and formaldehyde. In other words, it reeks of death. My hands feel pruny and ice cold, touching the cover. It's like drinking the life from my fingertips. Like the very material of this item is thirsty. Seeding the black woods, instruction how to corrupt the soil of a forest using offal of a goat, and the beating heart of a human. The beating what? I read and reread the passage, but it's plain as black and white. The beating heart of a human. I reread again and again, my disbelief washing over, away, more and more every time. This isn't a joke. First, the stare that only the locals have. Then the disappearances. Now, this book describing sacrificial rituals, the truth dawns on me. Sacramento has been overrun by cultists. And then our protagonist was the zombies. People haven't been spirited away by angry forest spirits. They've been abducted, and I'm next. I can't stop trembling. Should I hide? Is there even anywhere to hide? I certainly can't run. These cultists could be anywhere. I hastily flip through the book. Maybe there's something, anything I can use to escape. Amidst hundreds of in pages of indecipherable runes and obscene rituals, one catches my eye. Manifest the All Mother. According to this, the All Mother is supposed to be a benign, eldritch entity with profane powers of life preservation. Nothing else in this book looked even remotely benign. If this book is for real, then this All Mother is my best shot at getting out of here alive. Summoning a space demon is probably a bad idea. But my odds couldn't get any worse than they already are. They haven't found a single person that went missing. Besides, there's still a chance the book is fake, right? That there is an exp explanation for all the weirdness happened in Sacramento. I'd better hurry and do the ritual and find out. Looks like I already have everything I need to try. I have an inventory now. I have no equipped items. And I have a book. Uh, the entity is a benign preserver of life. It cannot harm you. However, no contact with Eldritch Gods completely safe. To summon her, douse any lit candles. Okay. Done. Ensure there is an idol of a black goat somewhere in the room. Looks like an idol of a goat. Only it has too many legs and too many eyes, and it weighs a ton too. How to get upstairs? Well, that seems good. Check. Have a plant mister with you. Okay, that's a little bit more tricky. Oh, another cat pillow. Um, there's a plant. There's a plant. Plant mister. You found the plant mister. At certain times of conversation, the icon will appear, and you can spray the speaker with water by right-clicking. This will interrupt whatever they're doing or saying. This feature was primarily included in consideration of players who dislike being hit on by older women slash eldritch abominations, but it has other uses too. I love that they're very transparent about that. Uh, when facing the tree of the Blackwoods, chant her name. Okay. Facing the tree. And clicking and dragging. Very sh long name. Roxanne, you don't have to put on the red light. It worked? This book is for real? How did they get their hands on something like this? Or the yellow sign. I guess red light or yellow sign. You don't need to use either of those. The form of the black goat of the woods assails my senses. The birthplace of life and the final resting place of death. The maker and unmaker and her, all her undulating horror. A vile saline ooze seeps from the pores of my clenched fist as I'm overcome by otherworldly nausea beyond reckoning. Tolerated mortal stench upon my soil long enough. Today is the end of empty threats. Yes, her name is Roxanne. All that you are, all you ever have been, shall now become mere fertilizer for my black woods. I mean, I'm going to be honest, it's a game where you date Eldritch Horrors. They can't exactly play the whole thing straight. 
The blood, trapped within my distended veins, quickens, surging agitatedly beneath the flesh of my cheeks. Well timed, Nintendo Desi. How you doing? I hope you actually have gotten to the Nintendo or Nintendo uh, Volcano Bake Meat section of uh, Vietnamese Crystal now. And if you hadn't before I sent that message, I, I apologize for any confusion it would have caused you. One thing is for sure, that mother of Earth ain't flat. No. The Earth is spherical, you see. Why are you blushing? Girl, pretty. This is the kind of game it is. I thought I was driving you insane. All that sweating and hyperventilating? You looked like you were going to throw up. Oh, that's just what happens when I talk to girls sometimes. What? Foolish mortal. Your impudence has made me very... Very. Oh, forget it. What is it this time? Torture again? Why did you catch your cult mate with someone else and now you want me to pretend to be your mommy to comfort you? The mom is ba blocking the oven. You can't see the message. Oh, that's a shame. But you know what I'm talking about. Okay, good. I it definitely would have been a weird message if you didn't know anything about uh, Vietnamese crystal. I'm still not actually sure what the volcano baked meat is. Because I thought it might be a replacement for the candy Rage Candy Bar, but I don't think it is. Uh, cult mate? Torture? I think I've been confused for someone else. Again. Out with it. You probably only have a few more moments before your lust breaks your will. So make it quick. I'd like to point out that this is a sequel to a game, by the way. <laughs> they made more than one of these. Huh? I feel fine. I mean, she's trapped in gorgeous, and I feel like my heart is beating out of my chest. I don't feel like my will is breaking or anything. <laughs> Goddess of fertility, the physical manifestation of perverse desires. And you are standing two feet away from me, at the very epicenter of my carnal influence. And you're telling me you don't feel a thing. It's the Island Burger. Okay. Yeah, it's been too long since I've played I, I played Gen 2 then. I mean, I think you're really beautiful. And that's all? You think I'm just beautiful? <laughs> Sophie, <laughs> how you doing? You stepped in at a weird time. I've played a few more normal games than this. But this this is definitely the weirdest one on the docket, I think. Closer and take a deep breath so I'd like to point out that this is a feature they added and explicitly stated that if I do think that the Elder Abominations are getting too horny, I can, I can spray them down. And we're going to do that because I think it's funny. <laughs> totally worth it. Goddess of Lust getting rejected by her own cultist in her own dream. Expected out of your crew, but not here. Look, I, it even flagged the stream as mature because I'm playing games and demos, and that's a mature game. Yeah, the spray bottle's really cute. Uh, our protects is asexual, so hypersexual, having the fertility goddess right in front. Oh, she's definitely hot for the fertility goddess, 100%. Like I said, this is a sequel after all. I don't know if it makes it worse or not, but I'm not anyone's cultist. What did you say? I'm sorry. I summoned you because my life is in danger, and I thought maybe you'd be able to help me somehow. Suddenly she lifts my chin and pulls my face close to hers. You You're not under my influence. You're not one of them. I just noticed she has four eyes. How did you get Well at least book? three. What do you mean? I just found on the floor. To me. You are in grave, grave danger. The thousand doesn't know you're here yet. They will be coming for you. You've got nowhere to run. Also, Desi, thank you for resubbing because I totally spaced on that. I'll admit the horny goat demon is definitely definitely one of those things that requires more attention than I probably should. Not while I'm still rooted here. Any road you walk will lead straight back here. You need to do the rituals in that book in order, ending with a spell that will uproot me from this location. And once I've been uprooted, you'll be able to run for it and hope for the best. Don't let anything happen to the book. If you lose it before I'm uprooted, you'll have no way out. A chill is running up my spine. Run for it? No way out? Grave danger? Just what have I gotten myself into? Am I scaring you? I know it's a lot, but you have no choice if we're ever going to escape from Sacramento. That name still bugs, bugs me. Wait a minute, did I hear something right? Hold on, it sounds like you're trying to escape too. I've gotten messy with my cultists. Messy in a bad way, I mean. My followers have turned against me. 
and are abusing me and my woods' power to kill outsiders indiscriminately. This is a nightmare that I'd just like to end. But neither of us can leave without the uprooting ritual being performed. But I should warn you. These incantations and rituals can be terrifying for a non-cultist to perform. Even successfully completing them can have grave consequences. These rituals will test your metal in ways that... I'll do it. What? Really? <laughs> You're just okay with what I'm saying? Give you Paradise Killer vibes? I've never played Paradise Killer. I am. If there's a way out of this, just tell me how and I'll do it. Are you sure? So many people gone missing in Sacramento. I'm not letting the same happen to either of us. Not today. Let's not waste any time. Start with the spawn partner ritual first. You'll need it. Alright, this is where I left off when playing the demo at PAX. So, I think I'm willing to try doing this thing first. Okay, light the ritual candles. The color of the flame does not matter. So please choose a color you find comforting. Okay, what are, what are my options here? Red. Black, green, blue, pink, purple, yellow, snuff. I think the purple's doing it for me. I think the purple's doing it for me. Um, have your choice of aromatic herb on your person. Pick a scent you find pleasant. Okay. Imagine your ideal partner. If it exists, it will appear before you. If it does not exist, it will be created. Uh, do not imagine something you can't pet back. Oh, put back. Makes way more sense. Okay, so now I need to go get some, like, spices. I just have my spray bottle, so I don't actually have the ability to, to do that yet. So let's navigate. Oh, everything's in this room? Okay, I assumed I would need to go downstairs and get the, like, cinnamon and stuff, but I guess... I guess there's a plant in this room that I can harvest some sort of aromatic from. Uh, lavender. Rosemary. Mint. Mint! I think mint is the fa my favorite of these. So, have it on your person. Alright, let's do this. We're gonna get a... I don't know, I don't know purple minty? Feels kind of wrong. Yeah, it feels wrong. I think we have to go with the cliche here. Let's go yeah, uh, green. Mint is so good. Like, rosemary is good too. Lavender is good. But all the things I, I... I think mint is my favorite there of those options <laughs> wait I could explain I've got nothing <laughs> there's no need to be bashful especially after all that time you spent playing coy going down to the dispensary to pick up some purple mint that would be a good name for weed I, a weed strand I suppose See, I mean, I guess it should have been kind of obvious now. In view of the circumstances, perhaps I will allow you to be my partner. Yeah, mint can work well in both sweet and savory applications. I can't say quite the same for rosemary. And lavender, I don't want to eat. Really? And that's okay with you? Even though we just met? Well, it's sudden, and it'll be a long, long time before I could ever trust a human again. But... I'm not exactly the god of taking things slow. Besides, I already have a thousand children. <laughs> There's no harm in a thousand and one. Oh my. What are we talking about? Taking me as your partner? I thought you were talking about just being my girlfriend. We thought the two definitions of partners that a fertility goddess was referring to the platonic meaning. <laughs> There's three meanings of partners. Third. Cowboys. Are you still joking around while standing so close to me? You should be melting with desire. Being anywhere within a mile of me should amplify your lust a thousandfold. <laughs> oh, that's an easy one. A thousand times zero is zero. Are you saying what I think you're saying? Yep. So, I take it you haven't had children yet? Nope. And you... You aren't with child now? What's the harm in 101? 1001? Tell me this is an... It's on Steam. It does not have a, a... It's on Steam. They don't... I guess they did start doing that on Steam, didn't they? Eh. No. You're going to die here. And there's nothing I can do to help. What? You're not really gonna... You're not gonna help me? Because I don't have kids? I won't. It's that I can't. I am an entity of untapped cosmic potential. And I want a big family. The biggest family possible. 
I want every living thing on Earth to be a direct descendant of me or one of my followers. Well, yeah, but you have to, like, put a patch on to have any nudity. It's like the one I own, uh, Stay Stay, my first trip to North Korea that Squiggles got me for Christmas. Um, like, there are scenes in it that are clearly pornographic, but they're censored with clothing and other things and steam, so you can't see them. But if you did want to see them, you could go to their website and download a patch. Those that best serve that goal receive a fraction of my power. My most devoted followers are bestowed with gifts like extended lifespans, rapid healing, physical enhancement, and in some cases, immortality. Ooh. And those followers are the ones looking for you. You, on the other hand, have closed yourself off to my dark influence and are mortal and vulnerable. No kids, no powers. What if I don't want powers or kids? What if I drain the life from your body? And then used it to fertilize my wicked soil until something that will give me grandchildren comes crawling out. Uh, I take an involuntary step backwards. I'm sorry. You didn't deserve that. Are you alright? I'm fine. Don't worry about me. Let's move on to the next ritual so we can get out of here, okay? Mm. Holy moly, that was freaking scary. She's really taking this hard. I'd better go get the stuff for the next ritual. Epicurean feast. Uh, light the ritual candles. Color does not matter. Oh, wait. Collect the following. Meat from a living thing that died within the black woods. Milk of a black goat. Said 2% is apparently fine. That's in the fridge. A receptacle filled to brim with liquid life. Blood. They meant blood. Please use blood for this ritual. Check the meat rack. Okay, well, I've already seen the, the stuff here. I know where to go for that. That's not a door. All right, we'll do one more ritual that I think I'll have to call it for this because I still have an awful lot to get through. <laughs> and it's already taken, according to my OBS recording time, two hours because I've played at least several of the demos to completion, which probably wasn't smart. Though I did give up on one early because it was having some encoding issues and I was tired of playing it. Get through here. Nope. Oh. Actually, that probably is... Oh, I'm, I'm off. I'm way off from where I thought I was. Oh, crap. Um, let me go this way. I almost think that since the game doesn't actually have any, like, time pressure, having the map on screen while you're navigating would be nice. Like, that's a feature the Danganronpa games have, which I find to be kind of pleasant. Or Metroid. So you don't end up, like, wandering lost and having to consult the map every three seconds. Especially in a game like this, where it's pretty easy to turn around with all of the rooms looking pretty similar. You know, different blood, but still. They're all the same rough shape and size. Apparently I do have hearts, though. Um, Grab some meat. Took a monkey from the hook. Should be what I'm looking for. Smells kind of strange. Is this beef? Pork? Whatever it came from, it was huge. Should move on before I count the number of legs hanging on the hooks. Get the blood... Receptacle filled the brim with liquid life. Blood! And on something amount of it. What is the ritual calls for? Yes, it is. Who closes doors behind me? That's a really good question. The milk of the black goat. It looks like a regular carton of store-bought strawberry milk with a label stop, stop on it. I guess cultists have a hard time getting the real thing from Roxanne. Now their relationship is soured. No pun intended. It should be good enough. Chill just ran up my spine. Am I being watched? I have everything I need. I have, just have to get out of here fast. Okay. Uh, making her face in the right direction. Maybe the person who's watching me is the one who uh, who's closing the doors. Um, right. I am where I think I... I am where I think I am. Here, over here, rotate, stairs, turn, into the stardust room. All right, um, yeah, we're gonna do the ritual. I have all those things. 
uh, fire red candles. Red. Okay, we have those things. Let us chant. everything perfectly impressive nothing to it if all rituals are this easy we might just get out of here perhaps so i um i don't want to leave things as they are between us your life is your own i'm sorry for losing my composure oh that i nearly forgot about that already i'm all surprised a literal god would bother apologizing to a human after all I've given it some thought and while you may be blasphemously abstinent you're the only person in the world that can help me. You see, if you step within range of my woods, any desire you have that will lead you closer to me is amplified to such an intense degree that it's unbearable. And most of the time, it's lust. Anyone who is led here seeking carnal or animalistic pleasures develops the Sacramento Stare and becomes a cultist. If you are brought into my woods for any other reason, you don't become one of my chosen thousand, and your desire will make you futilely search the woods for what isn't there. You'll forget to eat and sleep, and you'll search and search until you die of exhaustion and become fertilizer for the woods to grow further. You're the only person to reach me without joining the cult or dropping dead. Thanks in no small part to the fact that you don't have lust to amplify. My only question is, if you're not here for lust, why are you here? Good question. I pulled the receipt out of my pocket. I came looking for my parents. This used to be a handwritten letter from them saying they were here in this house, but once I got here, it turned to a blank receipt and won't turn back. The woods have indeed toyed with your emotions to bring you here. That paper was likely never a letter from your parents, but the woods made you believe it was. So they really aren't still alive? They were likely consumed by my woods no more than three days after they disappeared. Oof. I feel like I've been punched in the gut. The dust has long settled on my parents being gone, but the grief has never it, faded. It'll give you your strength back. The woods won't let you feel how tired you are. I don't feel tired at all, but come to think of it, I felt like I was going to collapse when I made it to the house. I don't think I've eaten since they've gotten the letter either. I'll take a few bites, and the tears abide, abate. It'll be alright, Stardust. Stardust? How do you know my parents' nickname for me? Anything that dies within my Blackwoods becomes a part of it. A part of me. Their love for you likely lives on in me. I guess that settles it. My parents are really gone. It's the only way she could know that name. That's outright terrifying. But I feel strangely comforted that a part of them is still out there somewhere. Hope this isn't an offensive question, but how come the book said you were benign? All the missing people and the people that came looking for them? You ate it was them? It never supposed to be like this. I came bearing gifts of safe childbirth for infant and mother, hungerlessness, disease immunity. Um, Instead, my own worshippers tormented me until it broke my hearts. Hearts. Now my woods are bloodthirsty, and I'm forced to watch innumerable die. But why? How could someone do something like that? How could someone have so much hate in their hearts? Had an eternity to accumulate. What was that? Someone, something breaking downstairs. Already? No, 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 no! I forgot. Roxanne's just as scared as I am. I need to be more careful with showing fear for her sake. It could just be the house. Place is old and rotten in some places. So sometimes the house shifts on its own. I'll check it out. It sounds like it came from the kitchen. Alright, well. Right. Another episode of Sucker for Love at Date to Die For is coming up. She wants you to lust for her and she's got your parents' love inside? Yeah, it's kind of creepy. All right, well, that was that. Very good timing. What an odd game. Absolutely. Absolutely weird. I do like the adventure game, like, walking around. Well made, but odd, yeah. Because, like, the 3D sections run me a little bit of Danganronpa. Like, you're wandering around in 3D areas and looking at things. The spinning around is kind of fun. Yeah, I thought it was cute. Uh, before we move on to the next thing, I'm just going to leave this up here because the music's good enough. Um, I'm going to get up for a quick, very quick stretch break. So that was Sucker for Love, A Date to Die For. That was cute. Let's move on to the next thing. Make sure OBS is cooperating, and it is. 
Okay, so after that, after that was, oh, this, this was cool, actually. Um, unfortunately, no demo. But very much like Ghosts and Goblins style. And the cool thing was is that like, they didn't even like have a booth for this. It was just a couch. I just literally sat down on the couch and started playing this and it was so comfy. Um, and while I was doing this, uh, <laughs> there was a couple over to the left who had, were talking to some people about something and had this, this kid in the stroller. And as I'm playing this, this kid just has this look of abject horror on her face when like this scene came up. Now well, maybe it wasn't this scene. It was the thing after this. You have a choice between slaying and helping. If you slay him, you get a really gory scene of you bashing him in the face with your mace. It's It was cool. So this, this was fun to play. I had fun with this one. And it, it was in the perfect spot, too. Um, <laughs> what? Wait, what? Wh where'd the guns come from? I am utterly confounded by the ending of that. It was very much Mace Man the whole time. Poor kid. Oh yeah, kid was definitely traumatized. <laughs> no speed streaming the speedruns. Re oh, the original. I didn't know that this was a sequel or a remake or something. Interesting. But yeah, it was fun to play. I had to actually ask them. Contra cameo. Ah, okay. I actually had to ask them uh, for a flyer for this one because they didn't have anything telling me what this was while I was playing it. Um. Oh crap. Where am I? Oh, this is this is also me, but that's not where I'm at. Im impulse. If you don't know what impulse is, I'm shocked. So this is the game that is being made by Shell Jump, aka Anon, aka the dude who made Hacker's Dreams. Um, he apparently has an awful lot of people, Kaizo people, work, help, working on this, helping him out, like with some level design and/or testing, such as Third Wall. And I'll be shocked. I guess I'm shocked here. Um, but yeah, I went and played this for a bit, and like, yeah, quality of life stuff, lots of it. It's kind of tricky. Um, I'm certain I am going, like, if I play this, I'm certain I'm going to be confused by the directionality thing, because it's the direction you're sending your force out of, rather than the direction you're applying the force. Um, <sighs> say sequel's the one called Do or Die, but apparently it's a major content. Okay. Unregistered Hypercam 2, Jesus. <laughs> yes. Oh, hey, our teleport shot just bounced uh, off tough to wrap your head around. Two sets of directions. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, I got to talk to Anon and the artist, and that was really cool. Um, while I was there, they started discussing how a certain level needed to look and how they wanted to, uh, how Anon wanted to focus attention on specific things uh, and how the lighting should reflect that. It was really cool to see the design process. Um, I got fairly far in. I could have met uh, Jiski, but I did not because I wandered off. Because uh, Jiski was there. I, there were probably a couple other, a few other Kaizo people. Um, I should have pulled this up. Oh, crap. Let me do this really quick. I also met uh, Proto Pizza, a.k.a. Kev, from Rump Hack Races. Let me see if I can find this. He showed me this um, video on his phone. Here we go. Copy, copy. No, no, no. Message. Dang it. I want to copy this. Yeah, Hypercam, that's how you know someone's old school. All right. But yeah, this game is really cool. The people make it are really cool. I, I don't know how well I'm going to play it, but like things that really help, uh, there are save states built in, so you can just like press a button and it puts a save state down, and you can reload it right after you die. Um, I think there's also like ghosts to show you the moves and inputs, good input handling and everything. Yeah, really cool stuff. Um, the philosophy and things. It, it was just cool talking to Anon and learning about his ideas. What's up, Luis? How you doing? Uh, always stream late. I do. It's just how I how I roll. Can't figure out how to connect the HDMI. It's tricky. HDMI is weird. I don't know. I don't have much more to say about that. It's hard. But yeah, this is cool. Definitely either watch a, a full proper trailer because there's a good proper trailer. Which thing? Well, especially if you're like splitting or doing capture. Sometimes I have problems with that. Like my HDMI splitter doesn't work that well. Anyway. Um, did want to show you this since we were talking about Proto Pizza. Um, doing shell jumps in Mario Wonder, you know, while playing the demo. Because that's just cool. So, figured I should show that since it's a related story.
Um, yeah, I think that's what I got to say about that. This is cool. Has a lot of nice accessibility stuff to try and bring Kaizo to the masses. That's about it. Uh, we can close all these now that we're done with those. Um, oh, yeah. Corgi. Oh, that's another thing I guess I should point out. So, like, we, I was talk. These, these are all in Arch. This was in this side of the expo. And for what, for some godforsaken reason, Friday, they didn't have the AC on. It was really fucking hot. Don't know why they did that. Buy an HTML splitter at Best Buy. That's probably your best bet, though you might want to, like, go on Amazon and read some reviews and check some things. It really just depends. All right. So, Arch, Arch Gorilla, because it's right by Pink Gorilla. Uh, Corgi. This is cute. It didn't run very well um, when they were demoing it, and their excuse was that it was on a Mac, uh, which I guess I buy, but, like, the frame rate was definitely suffering. Um, this is basically, like, Mario 64 if you can't die. Like, it's it's a cute platformer. There's no stakes. You collect corgi butts so you can climb or fly better. I forget exactly what it was. Like, heart-shaped things that they call a corgi butts. It's cute. Didn't have a long line. HDMI can have encryption layers, which makes things more difficult. Most game systems don't necessarily invoke that stuff, but later ones do. Like, uh, I know the PS4 and PS5 do. So, yeah, this was cool. Fun little thing to play when I, when there was no line. Not much more to say about that. Um, Floppy Nights. Apparently this is made in the, the Godot, Godot engine. I would happened to learn that today. Um... There was an odd trend of, like, tactics-based games, and this was one of them. I found the interface for it to be a little bit clunky, and the art style reminds me of, like, people who really want to make a Cartoon Network cartoon, which isn't necessarily the best thing. But I don't know, it's some mix of cards. I found the card thing to be distracting from, like, the actual strategy, but I didn't play it for that long. It might actually be good. Um, HDMI was built to make capture cards not work, so that's a thing to know. Fair. Uh, how did I find these games on Steam? Card City Nights. Yeah, I've had that one up somewhere to go look at, but I, I never did. I went to PAX. So, Penny Arcade Expo is downtown, in downtown Seattle in these two convention centers. You can see that these are all of the assorted publishers and small indies that came over, and even more here. The couch was, like, right... Or wait, am I turned around? The couch was like right here. I don't know why. It was a really comfy couch. Um, I guess I should show these at some point during the stream. So here's all the swag I got. It was mostly um, stuff, especially Nintendo Live, give a lot of swag. This was from the beer garden. The beer garden was actually in a pretty nice place, um, comparatively. You see this little bit here? That's actually, oh, I guess it shows up pretty well. Um, this area here is a really pleasant uh, just outdoor patio. And the beer garden is right was right underneath here. So you could be in the shade, or you could be in the sun. It was really nice when I went once. Voodoo, yes. All they had was cans of Voodoo Ranger, which is a bit of a bummer. But um, So yeah, Nintendo Live stuff, Voodoo Ranger, the sticker, I'll talk about that when I get to it. Some some pins. The Calico thing came from the Polish booth area. Uh, some Japanese um, stuff, more Japanese stuff. And then the two monster stickers, which I can also talk about that. Um, also, another thing. I always earmark a certain amount of money to buy something stupid at a con and often fail to do so. Never just have Voodoo Ranger. I think they also had some wine and stuff, but I, I miss the fact that they had uh, taps at the older convention center. I was kind of sad to see they closed the, the bar space there too, but uh, this time I successfully bought something stupid. I bought this. If you don't recognize what this is, this is, and I kid you not, I was shocked to hear this, official Neopets merchandise. This is a cool neg from Neopets, where if you consume it, if your pet eats it, it gets like some stats or something. I don't remember how it works. I used to play Neopets a long time ago. But it now sits on top of my coin jar. And I did weigh the coin jar after this because I was curious. 3.75 kilos. Anyway, let's get back to games. I had fun with my PAX interlude. Um... Floppy Nights, yeah. Super Dungeon. So this one was one that I played for a couple minutes and was like, I don't think you put your best foot forward with how they presented it. Because I think they want it to be like the Mario Maker of Zelda. But rather than giving me, putting me into a cool dungeon, they gave me the Maker tools first. And so I wandered around for a bit with the Maker tools. I'm like, this seems really complicated. 
and in the minute or two I'm going to play this, there's no way I'm going to make something cool. This probably would make some people very happy, but I don't know. It didn't really work for me. That is a lot of coinage. Yes, it is. Absolutely is. I just drop my coins in there every time I come back from pinball or if I get some coins from, you know, change somewhere. But anyway, yeah, that was it. Nothing much to say about that one. Like I said, I, everything I looked at that I had documentation I looked at, I, I, I put on the sheet. There is a demo. We're not playing it. Long story short. Uh, Mr. Run and Jump, I thought this looked really cool. I didn't get to play it because the stuff at the Atari booth had really long lines. Cheap Zelda, Zelda Maker, exactly. Like I said, not my thing. This looked really cool. I dig that they're trying to sort of like bring back the, the vector clean, vector line style. Um, I'd have no idea how it plays. It looked cool. I took a card. Rough Location China. Yeah, I'll explain that one in a minute <laughs> when we get there. The rough locations are based upon what I remember being there. But yeah, looked cool. Um, oh, this one also looked cool. Everdeep Aurora. This was another cat-based Metroidvania or some sort of game. I, I like cat-based games. It had a cool like Game Boy-esque aesthetic from what I remember. Surreal Vector Take, yeah. It's a cool aesthetic. Um... Like, I appreciate people trying. You've got to see that they're clearly balancing things, not how you would do it on the, the system. But, like, this looked cool. Didn't get to play it. Maybe it's cool. Hard to say. I like the map. Looked like a Unity game. It, it probably was. Up until recently, a lot of people were very happy using Unity. <laughs> a lot of people. But I'm not getting into that, because if I do, it'll take way too much time. But, yeah. Cat-based, some sort of platformer or exploring game. I like those things. Looks cool. Um... China. There was a Chinese publisher. That, that's, that's why I'm saying Rough Location China. These were all at the same table. Um, I didn't get to play any of them, unfortunately. Wait, did I? It says I played this one. Oh, well, that was, that was near China, not actually China. What? Oh, they keep advertising the Tokyo Game Show, and I'm definitely not going. Snake is cool. Yep. I wish you could say it doesn't matter what engine you use, but you can't really praise Unity anymore. I mean, you can still say that it's a easier to use engine, but man, the terms of service is selling your soul to the devil there. All game devs in Unity are against Unity. Yep. Um, this looked cute. I didn't get to play any of the games at their table. Um, but, I don't know. This could either be an adventure game or something else. Like I said, I mostly just went through it. The publisher was this play something or other. Or maybe it was Gravity? I think it was Gravity that had the booth. They're gonna retcon that, but it's gonna burn so much goodwill. And it does appear that their financials are not in a good shape for this kind of thing. Um, it's weird. When them tried to sue my Microsoft? Oh, they definitely will. Recent changes they made were beyond redeemable. The trust is ultimately broken. Yep. I imagine at least a few people will just stick on it after they roll back because they don't want to have to rewrite everything. But people will certainly be looking for different or engines going forward. And uh, to add fuel to the fire, Humble Bundle sent out a Learn Godot, the engine bundle today. So... Either amazing timing for them, or an ab like or absolute shots fired. So, anyway, this looked cool. I don't have much more to say. Um, this one actually wasn't the Chinese publisher. This is another Metroidvania. Oh god, I don't want to watch someone else play it. I don't know how to turn that off. I mean, I I guess I technically do because we're going to watch the demo. But trying for more like a, a sort of I don't know NES running gun style for this one. Also looked really cool. Um, since I don't have a card for it or anything, I also played the, uh, the CDI Zelda-like, and I was surprised at how good it was. So, there we go. That, that's covering that. Since there's not a whole lot more to show, it, it played pretty nicely from what I played, what little I played. Um, but I didn't spend a lot of time here, so I can't say much more than that. Um, this one I do have a demo for, and I'm kind of curious to play this. It's a co-op game. There's a... God dang it. Um, there is a fish. There is a cat. I'm going to assume that the cat can't go in the water. The fish can't go on land. Game Maker is a special offer. People jumping to make Game Maker. Oh, that's cool. Waiting for stock to tank. Let Epic buy them out. Possibly. Yeah, they're all taking a piss on it. It's true. Have Game Maker at home. Show us more. Maker. Anyway, I have the demo for this rigged. We'll play it for at least a few minutes. Playing this as like one person seems like it'd be a drag. 
but it still seems like it could be cool. So we'll, we'll try this one out. Uh, but like I said, we have a lot to go through. What are we in? Line 20 of 50-ish. So I can't spend as much time on every demo as I might want to. As has been demonstrated, we've only played four. Um, where are you? There we go. Not that good, at least for the things we want to make in Game Maker. That's true. But, you know, you can do a lot with it. Oh, this one's actually made in Unity. To the disappointment of everybody watching. All right, let me rig this up properly. Generally speaking, I don't capture that many different games per stream. So this is a bit weird. Oh, I need to make it so you can see it. That's important. Uh, let me know if it's a bit too loud. I'm still not very good at this, but we're going to try this single player. I want Mario Maker just to use Lunar Magic. Exactly. Um, yeah, let's just try the starter thing. Cop, we're doing this. All right. Select this, you want to play a single player. Actually, could I do this with two things? Hmm. Control plus control, control plus keyboard. All right, we're going to try this. I'm going to use the keyboard? I don't know. Oh, I see how it works. Okay. This is going to be awkward, I think. Because, like, both of these are move. But we're going to see how this plays. Getting choppy again? Ah, oh, crap. I think it's just, like, my video card is not happy. It looks okay. Some of these don't run perfectly. All right, so you see I'm moving the, the, the fish with my right stick, left stick, and the cat with the right. Smooth again, less PowerPoint. It's true. In my time on Earth, I've learned that fish don't do well on land, and cats absolutely shouldn't go in the water. Forgive me if that's stating the obvious. Backpacker beaver. Oh, I definitely want to get all of the... No, I need... I need no, 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 hold up. There we go. That's somehow important. Oh, you poor bunny. Oh, I'm so eating you. You are fast. Apparently I can't eat you. Alright, whatever. I will spare you. This time. Yeah, this actually kind of works with only one controller. So the key thing here is that, like... The left, the, you move with the two different things. Okay, I don't know what to do here. Fish, can you just... Actually, fish can jump. I don't have to do this. River can be dangerous. Keep your friends close. Yours, backpacker beaver. All right, we have to know. Cat does not deal with water. So it puts me back at the beginning of the stage. All right, we've learned our lesson here. Don't let your cat get in the water. Stream using your Windows 98 machine. Soon enough, one of those things that's on the list is a bunch of Game Jam games from Windows 98 Game Jam. And uh, I will stream that on the Windows 98 machine, or a, a DOS Game Jam. And it just makes sense to try to stream those from the Windows 98 machine. Go. There's a checkpoint tree. You both get close to it, it'll be activated. Well, good thing I did it right before I died. Oh, I got confused about which one was which. This art is cute, yeah. Figure out the tool chain. It takes time. Wait. Oh, right, because the, the, the cat's on the... Yeah, okay, we switched directions. This, I think, would probably be a lot of fun with another player. Oh, capture... Ah... <laughs> uh, you know, maybe one day I'll try that. I need to get real, ma uh, get my real player um, capture working. Yeah, I think this is cute. I think the art style is fun. I think really, like whether or not this is good depends upon, like really good depends upon like how the scoring thing works. Maybe because there's clearly a score, but I'm not really sure why for a co-op game like this. Ultimate decision. By the way, you run arch. Well, clearly you need more C, uh, C flags. Was that Gentoo? That might be Gentoo. But yeah, I think playing this with two people as opposed to trying to play this with one, probably a lot more fun. But this is cute, and I think that it really depends upon like what the puzzles later look like. Because right now I'm just, you know, moving the two down the river. Oh good, another checkpoint tree. 
I don't know how to do it without killing him. Um, that's weird. I'm kinda hoping I at least beat the first level. But there's not, like, anything much interesting here. Like, I'm just kind of moving them both independently, and there's no, like, how do I solve... Like, there's gotta be buttons to press, right? Like, that's the kind of game that you'd expect to find from this sort of thing. Take on the tale of two brothers? Possibly. Not familiar enough with that. Fine, radishes, bring them to my shack, I will reward you. Okay. Oh, I'm down by a path. <laughs> Wait, I wasn't close enough? I don't think I under <laughs> I don't think I understand this. Looks frustrating, but also adorable. Yes. I mean, it's frustrating because I'm playing both characters at once. And that the, the save tree thing seems a little inconsistent. If I was playing this with the normal controllers, or with two controllers even, I might be less confused. But any pu puzzle that was a timing puzzle would probably now be very difficult. Hey, I like this. This is one of those I might see about playing it co-op online one day, or maybe, like, seeing if one of my nephews wants to play it or something. You know, you never know. Oh, now? What? Now? Now it works! Okay, fine. Sure. Whatever. Can I move the camera? No, I, I cannot move the camera. That, could that be a button? What is going on? Why is the... Check behind those bushes. The river's full of secrets. Why Why is the river yelling in pain? <laughs> oh, the fishies. I'm gonna eat you little fishies. I guess that's not a thing I do. I just scare them. Just like with the rabbit. I can't eat the rabbit. Oh, hello. There's a whole, like, level over here. Well, that's cool. Is that Mr. Beaver? That's an owl. What's up, owl? Found Anapand. I don't think I like that thing. No, but it was cool to find a thing. We successfully did a thing. Want to make me want to go back and play Pikmin? Yup. Fair. This could be on stream, so like ask someone to join in. Oh, yeah, I guess that's a fair point. Um, yeah, I didn't even think about that, but I also don't want to play it for too long and having to like get all of that set up would take a while. We'd have a bird as a three player game. This keeps adding more players. I'm sending in more trains. I like this. I don't think I like it enough to, like, finish the demo if the demo doesn't end pretty quickly. Hold RT to move and move with R to grab and interact with yellow spheres. Okay, well, oh, wait, we're actually getting to, like... Gameplay. Puzzles. We have to try the puzzle, at least. Okay, it's said to, like, hold down the yellow sphere. What did it tell me to do with yellow spheres? Old? Oh, our right trigger, not right bumper. Okay, that's... I get those mixed up far too often. <laughs> okay, I... Also... Those are some good noises. That, that's all I have to say about that. Um, I think as a cat, I want to go this way. Or do I? I don't think I do. I think I... Oh, there's more space over there. The camera's a little bit of an issue because it's really hard to see, like, depth. depth. But, like, this is not bad. A little bit careful. You don't have much reach because I'm a cat. It's nice that, like, moving around as the fish has very few downsides. Like, I'm scared of, of dying as the cat, but I'm not scared of dying as the fish. So, like, you get some nice, like, asymmetric, like, little brother kind of thing going on here. 
Can I just make that jump or do I want to try to walk on this? I don't want to try to walk on that. Is the cat constipated? Yes. <laughs> Time to roll a third hand. Yeah. This is cute. I think I'd have fun playing this with somebody. I don't think I want to play more of this right now. Give that cat a, a hunger meter to make it interesting. It could be. I don't think they're going for like really hard for this. So th this is cute. Um, really hope you've enjoyed the River Tales demo. This is a little taste of the final experience. We are currently working on the final release. Some of the final release features. New biomes, co-op puzzles and challenge, time trial mode. Those are all good things. Skin system. Collect more than 100 rainbow birds. Co-op minigames, co-op boss fights, cinematic cutscenes, assist easy mode. And wish list and follow on Steam if you want to do that. Uh, Gravity Games. There you go. That's apparently they did a Kickstarter. Didn't know that. All right. Um, I'm just going to tab out of the game. I do think that some of these games are causing problems because it does say, like, here it is causing encoding issues. It does, doesn't say I'm dropping any frames, though, but I don't know if those are measured the same way. But I'm also not going to change the settings now because we're halfway through this. All right. Let's get Firefox back up here so I can talk about more things. There you are, Firefox. Okay, Never Awake. This is one I know Hawaluta was waiting for. Drop frames, usually internet. That makes sense. So this is weird. This was part of like the Japanese indie set. As you can see, oh, never mind. This isn't the one I was thinking of. This is still weird. This is part of the Japanese indie set. It's a side-scrolling shoot-em-up. Well, it's a scrolling shoot-em-up. Um, it looks cool. It plays pretty decently. I had fun with the bit I played. I like the kind of horror theme. Encoding issue means hardware struggling. When your stuff lags, it's usually that too. Interesting. Yeah, I'll have to go and deal with that because I, I usually can't see it and I don't usually know that it's suffering. I'm gonna have to look at the VOD and try to figure out what's up with that. But this was cool and this was part of the Japanese indie thing. One thing I regret, there was not all of these had like QR codes and not all of them had uh, like a, pit, a thing you could pick up, which was kind of disappointing. This one did. Um, but there was one that was like a weird Ninja Gaiden-esque game, except you were retired. And so you were doing all these odd jobs, including like cleaning windows and stuff. It looked, it sounded hilarious when I heard people playing it, but I didn't spend enough time to look at it. One thing I kind of regret, but this seemed cool. It's already out. A uh, Perry Nightmare is the one that I, I think that Hawaluta was looking forward to. One, notice the art style. It's weird. Um, this very much screams indie game, but basically your, your goal is to kind of like shove things away from you. And you don't actually hurt these things, you just kind of stun them. Your weird Oni friend, right there, goes and uh, and goes and actually kills them. So you kind of have to like, balance getting more health and knocking things out. And oh, and if you ever get touched, she gets knocked on her ass, and you have to go touch her again and like stand on her to be able to have her back. Which is kind of important because you don't want to die, and you need her to not die. So this is weird. Months ago, you had the idea of a horror bullet hell. You searched online and found this game. Oh, okay. Vampire Savers. That's the thing, though, is you only have one button. You only have the ability to kind of push things back. So I don't think you get upgrades. I don't think you get auto attacks. Like, this is much more arcadey, I think, than uh, Vampire Saviors. Admittedly, I haven't played Vampire Saviors. I've only ever played Hollow Cure, but my understanding is they're basically the same game, except Hollow Cure is free. And it stars a bunch of, of uh, ver, uh, VTubers. So. Dive kick time? Yes. Very simple mechanics. Simple mechanics to understand. Difficult to play. Like, the little kids playing this were going nuts. It was really cool. So this was interesting. Um, eight. These people gave me a card when I stopped to like look at what they were doing. I think this is like a VR Overwatch thing and I just didn't care. So we're not talking about any more than that. Um, Abnormality, okay, this one has a demo. So this one is again in the adventure game genre and clearly is very indie. Um, the guy working the booth was clearly the developer. Um, I mentioned a couple things I noticed and how he implemented them that were kind of interesting. Yes, rough location near Poland. I'll explain what that means when we get to Poland. <laughs> but the... Po Actually, why am I... Wait. Um, this has music. We can show this. Summit. Um, the Polish booth was, like, right here, I think. And his booth was, like, over here-ish. I don't know. That's why it's near Poland. <laughs> um, but this is, like, an investigating game. You go and find various yokais and things. Um, 
like this one. Clearly a well, well wisher. I don't know what exactly you'd call it. It's not Polish, it's Polish. When we get to Pol, yes. Um, this was cool. He also had a handmade um, like little uh, capsule machine. And so I can show you here, these stickers came from his little handmade capsule machine. It was cute, including the well wisher. There you go. So this one has a demo and we're gonna play at least a little bit of it. But it's gonna be a lot of text. So I don't know how long we'll play for and hopefully encoding holds out. Like I said, we still have an awful lot to go through here and I'm probably gonna skip a few that I have in here now. But we're play, gonna play at least one of the Polish games. Right, for this to work, I have to go back to OBS. Um, this is 1080. There we go. Hopefully, oh wait, what am I looking over there for? There, it's working. New game. Welcome to the Abnormality Recruit thing. Dr. Shaw, the new director, the new Nor branch. Here's a replacement with the previous director. This must be your first day investigating. Let me help you out here. Abnor abnorm abnormally, anomaly is the term we use for creatures that cause disturbance. Invisible to our eyes, they're usually in the general population. You've heard of them as urban legends, mythology, and folklore cryptids. But they have the ability to conceal and reveal their appearances. This is why some of them got caught in found footage videos. Recently, we had a containment breach, which caused the contaminated anomalies they're contained anomalies to break free. Interestingly, there are numerous reports of new unknown anomalies as well. We have a change of direction this year. We will not be capturing anomalies anymore, but now we try to understand them by communicating with them. Due to changes, investigators and researchers work together to learn more about anomalies. Enforcers, on the other hand, have recently been disbanded from the Institute, and now they still, and now still, they capture anomalies for security reasons. It is your duty to investigate and learn more about the anomalies and make sure they don't disrupt daily lives. As a final reward for completing your training, you will receive a complimentary slice of pizza from the Anomaly Research Institute. Now let's start the training session. I left the camera on the desk over there behind you. Could you pick it up? And please talk to me after you get it. Turn around by moving your mouse, press WASD, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know how to move. I take camera with E. I talk to Shaw with E. Uh, what do you think of the camera? Cool, isn't it? Now you can show you how to use the camera, take pictures of anything that can be used. It's common sense to move slowly to take high quality pictures using the camera. The control diagrams over there. So yeah, basically, you know, you press Z, oh, camera, zoom. So yep, did that. Oh, take a picture of the blackboard, right? Probably should read the screen. Well done. What was that? The pot of plant just fell over. Seems like something might have slipped, stepped into the room. Take a picture of something that just entered here. All right. So something to note that even when you're not in camera mode, I guess, these things have collisions sometimes, which is weird because I definitely ran through a couple of them earlier. Anyway, we found the box dog. Good job. Seems that was a Nurakabe. All along watching a streaming session here. The camera you're holding is not an ordinary camera. We call it the beholder. The Beholder is our special camera that can perceive anomalies, which are invisible to the human eye. Be aware the Beholder is, has technical limitations and has limited storage and can only recognize objects that are not covered by other objects. By the way, have you ever used your PDA? The one that we gave you is also a special piece of equipment that we developed, uh, which we call the Common Arm Cam. It's a powerful multi-purpose device that allows you to keep track of received cases, taken pictures, and encountered anomalies, and conversed contacts. <laughs> That's what we're doing here. Um, check your pictures in the PDA by pressing tab key and selecting the gallery option. If you run out of storage, you can delete a picture in the gallery by pressing X. Vice also allows you to initiate a conversation with anomalies, took your picture. As part of your next training, go talk to, to attain the Nurikabe and talk to me afterwards. You can talk to it while using the camera. Good tip is to read their entry in the uh, anomal Anomalypedia in the PDA, right? Might give you some useful clues. All right. Pole-ish. I'm not saying polish. I don't think I was saying polish, but if that's what I'm saying. Anyway, Nurikabe, an invisible wall that impedes or misdirects travelers walking at night, has been suggested that the legend of Nurikabe was created to explain travelers losing their bearings on long journeys. The vibrating paper. Yeah, I like how they're all very obviously like billboarded things. Woof, let's play. 
Sure. Let's play hide and seek. Okay. Yay. You'll never find me. Hmm. Well, that was tricky now, wasn't it? Hiding in plain sight. Oh, you found me. I forgot I have that, spe you forget that special camera. Good job, Heidi. Woof, woof. Thank you for playing with me. Let's play again next time. I'm Nurikabe. Er, wait, hold up. No, Nurikabe. Nurikabe. Just made a bad joke, like radish, or reddish, or bluish, or Polish. I gotcha. Impressive, you just turned the Nur uh, tra tamed uh, the Nurikabe. Nerdy, yeah, anyway. Have great potential for novice. Oh, what happened? Another anomaly? We should do more frequent security evaluations. I don't have a beholder on me. Do you mind checking around here with the beholder? It's a fistipus. Unknown. What? Oh, tame it. Not take a picture of it. Tame it. Like, notice how I walked through it there. It's a little bit weird. I get it, but it's still a little bit weird. Hello. Must devour to evolve. What? Crunch. Er, not good enough yet. Zap. It hurts. I'll get you next time. All right. My apologies. I didn't expect this could happen. We haven't renewed the fire extinguishers here because of the particle shields. Use particle shields more often for situations like this. After not analyzing data from the picture you've taken, the anomaly didn't get registered in the Anomalypedia. That's unusual. All right, let's get back to training. When you fail at tailing anomaly, some anomalies escape and some could attack you. Don't worry, you can always come back later at a different shift during an investigation. Oh, I haven't introduced you to who. He's the first certified anomaly to work with investigators. He will be assisting you during your investigations. Hello, I'm who. Nice meeting you. I'll be your partner through your new career. I'll be following you around, floating on the right of your shoulder while you go investigating the cases. If you get knocked out during an investigation, I'll pick you up and you'll be transported right back to your room. I am small, but I can lift heavy weights, as heavy as a food truck. I'm not saying that you're heavy, though. He's really quiet in investigations. He won't be as annoying as assistants in video games who constantly ask you to, hey, listen to them. To be fair, I don't know how to solve cases because I'm, you know, I'm a ahu. A hool. I'll leave that to you, partner. Well, guess you gotta finish your training. See ya. See ya. Interesting fellow, Annie. Moving into your last lesson, your first task as an investigator is to solve cases. Some cases require you to take a picture and present it to the client. Some cases require you to investigate and tame a specific anomaly and then talk to the client, reporting your findings. For this training, I'm assigning you a test case where you can show me the picture of the current director of the Anomaly Research Institute. When you're ready, talk to me and submit your evidence to the case. Also, you can check out your received cases by pressing the tab key to open your PDA and select case. So, yes, it solves the case. Shaw is the person. Congratulations, you completed the case. Now to conclude your training session. Remember, this is just a test case, which remembers, th which remains that the real case would be more challenging than this. Knock, knock, we're here. Oh, they're here, just a moment. Apparently not the pizza delivery man, but I have another surprise for you. You're not the only urban supernatural investigator here. Meet Wes and Blair. Hi, I'm Wes. How you doing? I'm an investigator and I also do research on anomalies. I was heavily involved in the development of the database behind con 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 whatever, Anomalypedia. I'm excited that we're going to focus on gathering data for anomalies instead of capturing them this time. I'm looking forward to publish. I'm looking forward to publish a new paper this year. I'm looking forward to publishing a new paper this year about the appearance rates of anomalies. Maybe just appearance rate of anomalies. Hmm. I hope you'll have a great time here. Congratulations on getting the new job. Why don't you introduce yourself, Blair? I'm Blair. I'm also an investigator like Wes, capturing anomalies, solving cases, and stuff. But no more capturing anomalies this year. That's all you need to know about me. Oh, and welcome to the investigation team. Wow. Yay. All the interesting things are happening this term. It would have been really cool if this was my first term. New direction, new certified anomaly shifts. Man, I wish I was a had a certified anomaly as a partner. That'd be much more interesting. Are you implying I'm boring? Anyway, we just re received a new report about a new major case in the East Borough. Great timing. This will be your first mission, and I can sign it to you. If you need some clues about the major case, feel free to talk to them while they're in... Uh, while on an investigation. Oh, before your first investigation, try to introduce yourself to the other lab members. They could help you inter inter uh, inspect pictures based upon your area of expertise. You might encounter new anomalies after submitting relevant pictures to their research. 
We went in the lobby downstairs and I will open the portal to your first area of investigation. Okay, so in the interest of not reading more text I've already read in my life, uh, we're gonna go just straight out into the world because you can go talk to basically everyone here. There she is, there's our annoying companion. This dude, you know, everyone always wants to have books right next to a pool. That's just how it works. This man could be wearing a utility kilt, but he isn't. And it's unfortunate. Um, medical lady, you know, always got one of those. You can't jump, which is unfortunate for a walking simulator. I really do like jumping in a walking simulator. Um, this is actually the lobby. This is all water features. I think there's really only one person working on this game, so I'm not going to rag any too much, but I had fun playing the demo. Uh, work two parts of the day they can select on their own. One shift lasts for six minutes real time. Time passes when you're not interacting with an object, so take your time reading the dialogue. Uh, city is a city that never sleeps. Things will change over time. Some events, clients, and anomalies will only appear at specific times. If you think you're done for the day, you can always kick back and relax for the new next part of the day, or return to the lab by selecting end shift option your PDA. Reports of a gigantic moon appearing in the East Borough. Go to the East Borough. All right, I'm gonna go to the East Borough. Hey, E. And since it's a moon, I guess we should go at night because there's a moon. Oh, actually, really quick. Cases, a menacing moon. Um, okay, yeah, it doesn't actually say the time, which is not helpful. But yeah, we'll, we'll try night. Yeah, that's a big ass moon. What? What's up? Got to repite, there's lar uh, large footprints around the bamboo forest. A big foot would be uh, too obvious, but I'm curious what it's supposed to be. Outside my shift, but I'll try to find him. I'm not tired. I think you'd tame before I do. So, like, you could pick up extra quests. I noticed this. Um, I'm kind of surprised that, like, you know, since your first one, they don't just talk about, like, the big obvious super moon right here. But, eh. So now I have approximately six minutes to do an investigation, though I think I could try it again. Gibberish words on a wall. Bad stuff. Attention. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> I didn't wander this way last time. Uh, there was one specific thing I wanted to find. Duck the Enforcer. Oh my. Gummy Suns. <laughs> Gummy Suns. <laughs> Fun for the whole family. Even Grandpa loves it. <laughs> There's one thing I definitely need to see, though. I don't remember where he left it, so I gotta look pretty fast. We're not gonna go talk to, to people. We're looking for the super moon. I mentioned a Bigfoot here, but I didn't, like, you kind of have to use your time wisely. I don't think, I must, I definitely am not going the right way now. But there's some silly references. I really did like the Cronus thing right there. It's a classic. Ah, here, here it is, here it is. A human-shaped hole in a wall? Looks like it was made for someone else. Not for me. This hole was not made for me, and that's just sad. But it's for the best. After you go through a hole like that, you have to play DDR. Got ourselves a uh, sort of Japanese-style cemetery here. Nothing helping me. Yep, the mystery of Angabarathira, or whatever it is, vault. Take a picture of the moon. Guess that's probably the smart move here. Ooh, there's toxic waste over there. But yeah, there's an awful lot of other, like, investigatable things here, if you look around. Um, my shift is almost over. In fact, we can do this one, I think. We can at least see. Yeah, here we are. Here's our well-wisher. Yeah, I said grah! Oh, you're not scared of me? I'm supposed to be putting on my scary face. Am I a joke to you? Uh, who's spooky? I know you're lying. I felt like I'm not scary anymore. One day I scared one person, he was startled, and I thought I did a good job scaring him, but that guy was, like, somehow amazed by it. He jotted down everything on a piece of paper, and he ran away while screaming, This is the best idea ever! Ever since then, I've seen two kind of people. Those who are genuinely afraid of me, and those who actually want to see me. Now that I have now I have mixed feelings about this, but I can't be proud of myself just yet. I should be feared by people, not adored. Just embrace your fame. That's an interesting thought. But I haven't gotten revenge on the person who killed me. Don't you see that I'm a vengeful spirit? Since when are you like this? Oh, about a hundred years ago. Oh wait, that means they won't be around here anymore. Oh, well, I won't be able to get my revenge. Living, uh, letting go is the best revenge. Hey, you're right. What's the point of living my life and expecting 
unachievable goals. To be honest, I don't even know if I was actually killed by someone. All I can remember is that I woke up like this in a well and no one looked after me. Seeking revenge on something like that's not even that's not even here anymore? I can't continue my life like this. Well, thanks for giving me useful advice. Next time I'll try to be nice to people instead of scaring them. I'm Kyo Kotsu. It's been nice meeting you. I haven't seen anyone visiting this well lately. I think people got scared by the mysterious gigantic moon that's been appearing recently. Have you visited the temple? There's a crow up there that flies the temple uh, where the monk shows up in the morning. All right, well, that's actually useful. <laughs> They're wishing you well, yeah. I will say her story had a certain ring to it. Very familiar. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what this game is. It seems like it's cute. I'm not going to spend more time because, like I said, we have more to get through. But I like I like the demo. I think the dude making it, it's got his heart in the right place. And I appreciate, like, the, the references, you know, between the the Cronus Gummy Sons and the, the hole that was, wasn't was made for me. So, this is cool. I'll pro I might actually play this on stream when it comes out. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not that. Wait a second. Oh, yeah, there is a ghost of the, the toilet paper. And we'll talk to the ghost of the toilet paper, then I'll finish up here. Red toilet paper or blue toilet paper? Neither. I want regular toilet paper. Red toilet paper or blue toilet paper? You're ignoring me, huh? I do this because I don't want to haunt, want humans, especially their kids, to wander around at night in the public toilet like this. And what's the solution to that? By threatening and scaring them to death. That, that's a bad solution. Fine, you win this time. Oh, I got him to go away. I feel a little bit bad about that now. <laughs> All right. Anyway, that's this game. It was interesting. I like the guy making it. He seems like an okay guy. That's why we're, we played it. And I hope the encoder held up. All right, what's next on the list? Uh, a star named Eos. Uh, capture photos. Okay, I remember this now. This was another ja set of Japanese publishers. Uh, another Japanese publisher that had a whole bunch of different games. And this was very much in the style of those classic, like, flash games where you're in a room and you're looking at various things. You got to write stuff down, like the red room, and there's probably others. Um, it looked really cool. I got a keychain for this one, I think. No, I didn't get a keychain. It was for the other one. But basically, you look around in this room and find various hints and stuff and write them down. This was a, a one where I felt I kind of needed pen and paper to make progress, but I didn't actually have them, so I couldn't. Um, but what I played, it was cute. Like, you've got this here. You can kind of see there's a code going on here with the, the shirts. Um, like I said, I didn't get all that far because I needed to write down stuff. Because I think with the code with the shirts, I actually needed to turn or mirror them for it to work. But I don't remember. So, this seems like it could be cool. I like this class of game. They're fun. Uh, this is in the same class of game, but it's even weirder and much more anime. I'm, I'm going to be curious to see what the trailer actually shows. But basically, it's, again, the same sort of thing. You have a room and things you can investigate in it. And the... Uh, no, we can't see the subtitles. Uh, the, the premise here is... Uh, you, whomever you are, is in this room with this android girl... Uh, and apparently the professor's been murdered. And we need to figure out who did it. And you have to do it within six moves. And that's the problem. Is You have to keep doing this over and over until you find out what six moves are correct. And I definitely wanted pen and paper for this. To take some notes about which things do which. And so you can actually like go and set up the timelines. I did not manage to come up with enough evidence in the time I had to do that. So this seems like it could be really cool. Um, but I definitely need to take notes which I couldn't at PAX, so. And you have to, you can try again and do other things. I didn't get this far. Seems cool. I might actually pick this one up. Um, I really did actually like this, this set of games. There were other ones that were from the same publisher, uh, but I didn't get to play, mess around with too many of them. Yeah, it is really cool. Ah, Poland. We finally got to Poland. It's kind of a shame that these are in a different order. Uh, I'm not going to talk about this one because it's, because Janos, Janos, Sick, Genosic was the game on display. So we're actually going to jump. Well, well, we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to it. This one, I don't know what to make of this one. It seems cool. So planetiles. So what it reminded me of immediately was like Tetrasphere. 
But it's not Tetrasphere. It's like some sort of weird combination of Tetrasphere and Carcassonne. Um, so like you're building up these tiles and trying to accomplish quests to get more time to play, I think. Um, I'm not really sure what to make of it, but it was really cool. And this was part of the larger Polish exhibition, and there was an awful lot of Poland. But we do have a demo of this one, so we're at least going to try it for a couple minutes. Um, the sword order changed. Lovely. Mythic Owl again. Is there more than one Mythic Owl game in this? I'm not sure. Let me get into OBS. This is another 1081. Properties. Planets. Planet tiles. Right. Make sure you're capturing it first. Okay. And then grab the controller. Welcome to the tutorial. It's a game about placing tiles on a planet. Each of the adjacent tiles, each adjacent tiles with five points if it shares the same field type or one other. The island can be located anywhere on the planet, but we'll place it near the center this time. Press A to place the tile. So place it near the center. It's center-ish. Unlike islands, normal chunk of tiles need to be adjacent to the existing ones. So press it to place the chunk. Use L or RB to rotate the chunk. Press A to place. There's another one. Use it to rotate and place it. You've created a 3x3 three three shape. What I showed between the camera game and this? Uh, very little. Let me look at the spreadsheet. Um, dang it. Uh, a couple of adventure games. One room adventure games. I'm going to put the spreadsheet here. And I'll put, you know what? Actually, here. You guys can have it now. There's no reason for me to keep hiding it. Here is the spreadsheet if you want to look at it and poke around. This is Planet Isles. I skipped uh, jo Jan uh, Janosik, I think, because we'll talk about that when we get to the second game. Never played Tetrasphere. Would you like to have a one-on-one high, -on -one high score competition? I don't know. I'd have to, I don't know. That could be interesting, though. I'll think about that one. Get back to me. Create a 3x3 field, which can be transformed to a village, which will grant you special options. Select the arrow and press A to transform it. So, there you go. Try to complete a mission as it as is worth 100 points, and every 100 points you get new chunks. You can also press this to see the mission's objectives when we're placing the chunks. So, create a closed area made of at least one tile of forest to receive 100 points. Create an area of exactly four sand tiles to receive 100 points. So, right now what I'm holding is a forest tile. So we need to... In oh, wait, they're telling me where they want me to enclose it. But not how. Let's go with that. Seems we'll need a different chunk to fully encapsulate the forest tile. Use the special power granted by the village to reroll chunks. Press left to switch to the left panel, and press select village to press A to activate. Huh. That's better. This one is not made of forest, so we can use it. Place the chunk to encapsulate the forest and please complete the mission. I, I don't think that's going to work. It would have if I had rotated it the other way. At some point, you'll run out of shapes or ideas, and there's nothing else you can do, so use this to raise a flag. Okay. Uh, I'm going to continue. We'll mess around still. Our other missions, four sand tiles or four field tiles. I think this would make four field tiles. Create a closed area made of at least one tile of sand. So maybe closed only means on the sides. Interesting. Anyway, I run out of tiles eventually because I'm just kind of placing them willy-nilly. Um, one enclosed area of field. I think enclosed must mean not of the same type. Which isn't going to work because that's all field. But... That will create... Oh, I need a 4x4 four four sand. Whoops! Like, this one definitely seems like it could be just fun to play as, like, a meditative thing. See how long you can go. Create an area of at least 10 field tiles. Create 100 points or an enclosed. Okay. Just got some mountains. I don't know what to do with mountains. Yeah, that was 10 field tiles in a row now. Um, closed area made of 2. At least two to create a hundred. Okay, so I can do that here with these sand tiles that I already have if I didn't have all these uh, field tiles. 
I'll take that. Yeah, that works. Five cents. Oh, I just did that. What do I have on the other side of the planet? Nothing. I still have ten tiles to go, though. I'm doing a lot better than I did there. I'll just throw those over there. So I need to enclose at least one field tile. I could re-roll more things, but I don't think I want to. Does this count as enclosed? No. That does, though. Closed area of a three sand tiles to receive 100 points. Okay, so we can do this again. Is that there? And that would be three sand tiles. Enclosed area of two forests. So you can kind of see how the, the main gameplay loop here is. Uh, five sand tiles. So I could use this here. I think I, I think I will. But this will give me my two forests. Make a choice. Oh, we actually have advancements now. Because your music is baller, at least. That's fair. Uh, create every new rainforest colony will add two tiles instead of one. Every new center will allow the exchange of eight chunks for points instead of five. Um, the next ten... Oh, no, I didn't, didn't choose... What? No! What? No! <laughs> Crap! Ah! Cataclysm is happening and I didn't, didn't make any choices. Mistakes were made! Uh, forests? Exactly four forest tiles. Okay. I don't think I have any forest tiles, and the game is ending, I think. That's a forest. Oh, exactly four. Um, that's four. Oh, uh, the game isn't ending. Okay, I misunderstood what it was telling me. Uh, exactly five forest tiles, exactly five forest tiles. Okay. Um, well, that's exactly five. This is also exactly five, and a better use of my space. I can do it again. Interesting. Uh, five sand tiles, okay. I guess I'll put the sand tile here. Rotate this here. Okay. The area of ten forest tiles. That worked pretty easy. Uh, exactly five. Oh, I probably should have saved that for exactly five. Uh, or five field tiles. What's on the other side of the world? It's a bigger world than I thought. Okay. I'll plunk the desert here. Make just a big-ass desert in case I need a big-ass desert later. Some mountains. Uh, exactly five field tiles? Maybe. I don't know. I don't think that's going to work. Is it enclosed? No, just an area of exactly five. Okay. Um, and I need five forest tiles. Okay, so I could put this here. No, that's not going to work. Uh, whatever, just play it down. Okay. Exactly six desert. If I have one more desert, that'll just work. Uh, this is five forests. I have to select, make a choice. Every new observatory will add two tiles instead of one. Every new Pioneer's Oasis will give... I don't know what these really mean. Volcano. Oh, man. I want the volcano. We're doing volcano. We have to do the volcano. <laughs> I don't know why we have to do the volcano. But we have to do the volcano. Which is obvious. Oh, this is all forests. I have no forest goals presently. Six tiles of forest? Oh. It's probably fine. Desert. Um, ten sand tiles. That's nine. Oh, can I? I can fit it here, though. There we go. Build an even bigger one. Yeah, I guess that's not going to work so easy unless I get some nice connective stuff. I'm on the other side of the planet. This might work. 16. But like, yeah, this is this is nice and meditative and there's a bunch of weird rules I don't fully grok. It's cool. 
I liked it. I'm certain I'm going to run out of space at some point because I'm not doing the right things or run out of tiles. I definitely ran out of tiles faster in the last one when I played Adam Pax. And in fact, I'm kind of just playing badly now because I want desert. I guess probably I probably should have been using the um, reroll stuff. This is 13. I need a little more desert. Oh, never mind. Uh, closed area of at least four. Of at least four. Oh, that's not difficult here. Um, and then make a 4x4 four four desert. Yeah, because once I do the thing, I can throw away... Those 4x4... Four oh, no! Oh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. This this has not been helpful to my, my goals here, has it? Well, I need to enclose the sandy area. This helps with the enclosement. I don't get any one by ones, so I probably shouldn't do that. Closed area for my four. Okay, so I can't do both of these things. Uh, that's mad. I, that's a bad reading on my part. Yeah, I do think I screwed this one up. Yep. Well, it was fun while it lasted. My planet went a long while. I could live with that. So, my number of chunks went down, my points stayed pretty decent. You know, I think I did okay. No, no I, I'm done. Finish game. So yeah, that one's cool. Cool. I think that might be like a game I play on a plane or something. But, that's all I have to say about that. Except, there is no obvious button to exit the game. So instead, we'll just go down here and exit the game. Thanks for the GG. It was fun. Let's continue onward through our list. See how much further we can get. I'm still not done with day one. Um, oh, right. Uh, Janosik. Apparently, this is a well-known thing in Poland and the greater like Scandinavian area. I really don't know. But apparently, it's like a folk tale of some sort. They say it's the Highlander. I don't know if that means like... Highlander the TV show, or just Highlander as a concept in general. Um, but this is very indie. Uh, the guy who made the first one, and I think this one as well, was originally a wedding photographer, but when COVID hit, he decided he'd try his luck making games, which seems cool. Uh, so we're going to play this one for a few minutes. It's a Metroidvania-style thing. Yes. And Werewolf. That's another character. It has three characters you can swap between. Apparently. So... Heard of the name, but I have no idea what it is. That's fair. I don't expect you to know everything in that vein. Uh, this I, it was like a famous TV show in like the 70s or something. It'd be like kind of like if I made a game in reference to the A-Team, maybe. That kind of thing. That's vaguely what I remember. So we'll see how it goes. We'll play it for a few minutes. Like I said, we I need to start like running faster here. Max is indeed from Poland. Um... This is 1080. Games built on Electron cannot be captured using game capture? The hell does that mean? It seems to be working. So we'll just do this. It's a beautiful day. He has either really tall hair or a wonderful hat. Look at that flower. Giving it to, to his sweetie. Or not. He gets captured by people with tall hats. All right, well, that's the setup there, ain't it? All right. Don't run into the zombie. Um, I think I want him to do this. Nope, that just kills me. I didn't play from the beginning of this, so I actually don't know what I'm supposed to do. I have a dash. Can't dash upward. I may be very confused now what to do. I think this is this is working. If I keep whooping around. 
right? The iron mask falls off. And he dead. I can't push that. Up, up, right. Which up? <sighs> there we go. Are you okay? The silver mask is gone. Yes, I am finally free. Thank you, my liberator. Can you reveal your name to me? I am Yonosik. The Yonosik? I have heard epic stories about you and always wanted to meet you in the flesh. My name is Bodgen Werewolf. Are you a real werewolf? Why, oh, I understand why you were chained in Argent. I just hope that you won't bite me. Take it easy, I don't bite at first sight. Especially with my new, my new friends. I was thinking we have to get out of here. And this is my suggestion. Let's join forces and try to get out of this dank dungeon. All right, let's flee before the wardens come. There we go. All right, cool, I can switch characters. That cutscene reminds you of CDI Zelda. You dodge while you pulling, yes. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. That's like the one thing I'm trying here. All right, werewolves jump adequately. I don't think there's any difference between him and Yonosik. But yeah, I, 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 love, I like the aesthetic, like the tiny pixel art. I like the, the cutscenes. Um, like this, this was cool. And like I said, it came from the, the Polish group. Like this was in the Polish island of video games. And so we got a little Metroidvania style thing until I die, which we now have to start over with. Could check via Google Translate. I guess I could. I need to recruit him. Oh yeah, I think is this a save? Yeah, that's the save. Yeah, I'm certain I can get to that later, but I don't think I can get to it now. Gotta get out of the mode. But yeah, this was cool. Uh, the real, I think the developer wasn't there at PAX, but I think that was true for most of the Polish games. Just because there were a lot of them. Uh, but they sent a lot of people from Poland to PAX to show off games, which I just think is kind of cool. Poland apparently is a relatively large game developer. Which was something I didn't know. But most of the things I can name, like, could think of were, um... Nuts. What was it? That, uh, like... The Witcher, I think, is a, from a Polish studio. Um, and the other things made by that specific company. Uh, it is a little bit slippery, but... I can deal. Poland is very far from the West Coast. This is true. What's up, Steven? Thank you for the lurk. The Polish lurk. All right, switch characters. This was something I didn't figure out, because when I went to play this, I just kind of picked it up and started playing, because no one was playing. So I'd already escaped this, and had made my way into some sort of village. Switch. I never used the swapping mechanic at once. Only heard of only heard of CD Projekt in the, in the last few years. Interesting. I'm surprised. My understanding is like The Witcher is considered to be a pretty important book to Poland, just because like it's gotten international recognition and all that. Ditto for the game, I suppose. Okay. This is some place. This is where I had a bit of trouble because the controls are a bit funky. Because like you can generally do left and right motions with the stick, but you have to do down with the um, D-pad. I mentioned this to them, and I don't think they understood what I was, was talking about. Ooh. I do... Oh, hey, help. I do like the noise. Yeah, I'm kind of just hoping to get back to roughly where I started playing when I uh, played this the first time. Uh, there are breathing mechanics. Those are important. <laughs> that jump out of the water so fast. Read the map. I want... I would... I want to read the map. There is the map. We're in the Outer Bailey. It's a big place. Same thing. Skid in the Witcher. Tabletop RPG. Yeah. Like, it's one of those things where I just don't know that much about an awful lot of European things. And this is roughly where I started the game, though I didn't see the, the flat 
art. There's a style... What does it remind me of? It reminds me of Another World. Like Lucky Dogs. We are out of the Grizzly Dungeon. But let's not get... Let's not get stray. Where to next? I think we should get some weapons to have a chance of getting out of this place. What do you suggest? My cousin lives behind these walls. He is the master blacksmith. He has helped me more than once. He hid my... He hid my... Oh, horse! He ruined my horse! I read that his house and I was so confused for a moment. He made bells for sheep, and he sharpened my axe. And not only that, but we're not getting there now. Too many guards in the way. I think we need to go to the armory and stealthily borrow some weapons. I smell good clue. Let's go then. I, I, the translation isn't perfect, but I really do like it. <laughs> is David is David Copperfield? Interesting. Polish gaming is primarily PC. That makes sense. I mean, Witcher came out for PC first, I'm pretty sure. And this is also a PC game. Um, Another World was originally an Amiga title? Commodore 64? One of those two. I don't think I can go that way. Yeah, there's something cool there, but I can't get to it. So I guess we'll try... Maybe not, huh? Ooh, fish! Uh, oh, I get it now, man. I'm being dumb. Maybe... No, werewolf powers are no help here. Maybe I can jump higher than I think. Like, I'm pretty sure the game wants me going this way. Oh, hold up. There's a pillar here, Pat. Push. It's good, it's late, yeah. You have to get out of that mode first. It's kind of awkward how you have to press out of the mode first. Then you can swap characters. Because swapping characters should just take you out of the mode. Shielding. I... Okay. I have shielding now. Game saved. That was a one way. I, maybe I shouldn't have made that trade. I want the box. Gave me ten gold. So, if I want to get anywhere here, I need some keys of different colors. There's a golden key? I do not wish to die. Not today, my werewolf friend. Do werewolves swim? They do. Right, I think that might be the bronze key. The silver key. Which increases my health. Sweet. Can you swap midair? Good question. The answer is yes. I'm not sure what utility that might pose yet, but... Alright, well that was a room worth going to. Yeah, this this game is cool. I could definitely see trying to beat this on stream. Um, it's a sequel to a game that's also on Steam, which is free, and so I could play that too if I wanted to. Similar style, same developer. So... Very cool. I probably should have rolled there. Frequent save points. I appreciate that kind of thing when I'm playing poorly. Medieval Bun Bun 3. Uh, Alright. Well, like I said, this is really cool, but we do have to move on. Poland is a fun place. I'm glad I got to play I'm glad I stopped to play two games from Poland. But yeah, I could I could easily see playing this or the, the first one on on uh, on stream at some point. Just because this is definitely fits in my wheelhouse of things I understand how to play. And it just seems cool. Um, next up. Also, oh, wait, we, we were on Poland last time. Ah, there's more people. Oh, this is just, there's a badger. I thought that was an anchor. Um, yep, there we go. Uh, this, this is the other game, the same guy. This one was weird. Skeletons first um, lesson, first law. This is the only one that's not on Steam. I played this on a PC, so I don't know why it's not on Steam. But the basic premise is you kind of rotate the game to move your skeleton around while Isaac Newton makes fun of you. Um, it was weird. I don't know if I'd like it, but like it was a points thing. It looks like an adventure game, but it was about collecting points. I really don't get it. So someone's hacking me. It's the mole people. I'm used to multiple weird people on spreadsheets. Um, I'm not, my current, like, my usual spreadsheet is let anyone modify it, and so that's weird, but, um, point being, 
Uh, I got this sticker from him. Whoop. And I had a choice. I could either have Newton or Newton with a hat. And so clearly you have to use Newton with a hat. But for some reason, he didn't cut the stickers up so you could put them on things. So you just have to like, use the sticker immediately. I don't know why he did this. Uh, but he also gave me his business card, which showed, which just led to him as opposed to his game. I don't know. It was kind of weird. Either way, it, it was something. Um, Cobalt Core. Oh, Snack Side. These, these, I called this because they were close to the, the snack bar. Um, this looked cool. Oh, this. This one. So this is weird. But the thing that looked cool about it... Oh, I'm mixing this up with a different one. Um, yeah, this is kind of like... Everyone just likes to do the card thing these days. I think this has got some, like, FTL feels to it. And I did like FTL quite a lot. So I could see giving this a shot. Um, has animal, cute animal people, cute art. I don't know. I didn't play it. I didn't spend a lot of time, but I had a card for it. So it's here. I could see playing it. I don't know. But everyone loves the, the cards. That's going to confuse me. Let's scroll out the screen. The gap. You can see there's an awful lot of things I vaguely... Re oh, these people had really ni had a really nice card. That That's all I have to say about it. I didn't actually watch anyone play this or play it myself. Some sort of another, like, walking sim sort of thing. It could be cool. It could not. Like, <laughs> I'd like to say more, but honestly, I didn't learn more. But yeah, definitely a walking sim thing with some sort of other world thing going on. So you can maybe swap, I don't know. But they had nice, like, um, Polaroid-looking cards to take. So I took one. That's a lot of bunnies. It's a girl? Oh, great. I'll call her Nibble. Yep. She rarely goes out with us. And oh, crap. Table yeah, this could be cool. It could not be. I don't know. I saw it. It's on the list here. Um, Rabbit and Steel. This might be the one I was thinking of. This one is like a four-player co-op thing that just looked fun. Um, yeah, I can't speak to, like, any of the adjectives it has, but it just looked cool. And, you know, like, four-player co uh, couch co-op, maybe three-player, I'm not sure. Many-player couch co-op is something that is, you don't find nearly as much as you used to. Um, and I appreciate a game that's doing this sort of thing. Like, I could easily see, like, picking this up on Expo or something and playing it with my nephews. When, if and when this comes out, like, and when I'm hanging around him at some point. Um, the kind of game that maybe, like, my elder brother and his nephews would enjoy playing, and it could be cool. What if Toho were four players? Exactly. But th it also claims to be roguelike, or roguelite, or something. I don't know. It looks cute. It's got a concept I like. That's about as much as I can say about it. Um... I need space. This is another one of those ones where I was looking at it and someone gave me the card, but I still thought it looked cool. Um, I think this is another, like, adventure game, but you have a, like, Galacticat. So, you could lose three friends at once. That's true. But Toho, Toho is fun. Uh, this one has a demo, so we're going to give it a shot. Because this is, like, one of the ones that has a demo that I want to play the, the demo of, but I know the least about. So we'll give this one a, you know a quick look at because it does have the space cat and I do like space cats <laughs> but let's rig that up really quick uh, I am running through these good now there's a couple I added on the very end but I don't think we're going to get to them because um, I realize it's now 3am and I've been at this for 4 hours everything takes longer than you expect everything okay uh, this is a 1080 Wait, no, that's... This is... There we go. I think it's a 1080. We'll find out in a second if I'm right. Yep, 1080. Best experience with headphones. I'm wearing at least one headphone. It's a demo. May not fully reflect the quality. I need space. Ow. Start demo. Name the player. Face butts. As a general rule, do not let me name players. Best played with an input device? It does help. 
crewmate. That would have been that would have been clever. All right. That was short. All right. Well, oh, never mind. Still playing. I'm not playing yet. New discovery. What's that sound? Mama, use telescope to find and pin the source of the sound. Press B to continue. Okay. <clears throat> Press X to interact. Walk is this. What? Walk? Why aren't you telling me how to walk? Oh, wait, there's a second page. Open journal, interact, pause menu. These bubbles will appear on top of NPCs you can interact with. Okay. Oh, you can go slower if you need to go slower. This makes sense. Telescope. You can pin a certain spot while using the telescope to observe space. This pin will act, will show up as a waypoint to guide you when traveling with the pod. Press X to pin and Y to delete all existing pins. Alright, I think it's coming from this moon. We shall pin this moon. Like, just showing the direction of the button is really annoying. I, I actually do miss the actual uh, letters on them. It's not round or flat, flat. It's a 2D loop. Or 1D loop. There. Oh, wait. Oh, dang it. What am I supposed to be doing? Prepare travel for essentials. I need an oxygen generating plant and an oxygen tank. Okay. Got spiral sprout. Swirly plant, oxygen supply. All right, I got one. Is this an oxygen plant or oxygen tank? No! Is this an oxygen tank? Yep, container. Old oxygen tank has been used in ages, kind of dusty. The peaceful surroundings inspire thoughtful reflection. Contemplate a name for this planet. Sit in peace. Dark soils? Planet of the butts. We are, we are not, <laughs> we are juvenile people here. Can I mess with this? No, the arcade machine is not available for messing with. Can I jump? Yes, I can. All right, we're back in here. Um, bring them back to the cockpit seat. Yeah, this has been cute. I like this so far. Um, apparently I don't have everything I need to do to take off to the planet. Away from the planet of the butts. Look for tools to fix the pod's engine. Uh, not now. There, wait. No, I need... Oops, the pod engine broke. Find my toolbox. Probably by the well. Okay. The well is approximately on the other side of the planet. Yeah, it's very mellow. It's chill. Fixing pipes for the well. Can I enter the well? I entered the well. Apparently I didn't mean to, but I did so. Oh no. As with all adventure games, the problems have to spiral out of control. Got a crash. Slept through work, works, mornings, meeting, and you should not do that again. Fair enough. See you later, V. From the planet of the butts. See you later. We got the toolbox. Jetpack. Cool. Use jetpack. Well, when I find the jetpack, I guess. <coughs> Hold either. Ah, okay. Simple enough. A strange totem engraved with four star slots. A faint snore can be heard. You blew it up! You maniacs! Alright, so now we can repair with our toolbox. Yeah, this is nice. Okay, fly pod to moon. It's a little clunky getting on ladders. Okay, hold A to launch. Launching! Oh, I just kind of move. A to boost. 
No, no. Hold A to boost? This, this I don't think is the thing I'm looking for. Oh, actually, no, this is what I'm looking for. Little Night Moon, right? Fly the pod to the moon. Maybe not this moon. Is there a map somewhere? No, this is the moon I want. There we go. Ooh. Discovery completed. We find a cat. We must capture the cat. A wild cosmic cat appears. Find a way to capture this critter. All right, we gotta capture the cosmic cat. The cosmic cat is faster than us by a fair margin. Okay. Use something to trap and catch it. Okay. Oxygen will deplete over time in your areas with oxygen. Return to your pot or home planet with fresher oxygen. Jetpack uses more oxygen. Oh, hello. Oh, that's the thing telling me about oxygen usage. That's not helpful right now. What if I trick it by going the other way? Oh, hello, I have a jar here. Rock star, a dead or calcified star that looks like a cosmic flavored cookie. It rocks. Not sure what I need to do with the rock star. Discoveries, inventory. Okay. Oh, there's our cosmic cat. Ah, I see, I see, I see. Push the rock. Hold X to move rock. Push. There we go. And then we chase the cat the other way, and then we have cat. Alright, well, here's the problem. I'm on the wrong side of the cat. There we go. Problem solved. I'm out of oxygen. You know, in retrospect, I really shouldn't have used my jetpack. When I'm out of oxygen. Alright, I gotta say the oxygen thing is probably a problem. I didn't realize. Oh, the jetpack really depletes it. Okay. Cat get! Yep. Completed. New discovery. Craving adventure. Find something cosmical to feed to the cosmic cat. Um. I have something. Yes, feed now. Clearly, a cookie. I feel it. I feel the cosmos. All right. Apparently the door's sibling is now lit up and exploding and turned into a... It's exploding instead. Oh, wait, it's a black hole. Never mind. Well, this is closer to the uh, Katamari thing than I thought it would be. It's exploding with snacky happiness. That was weird. Name the cat. Short game, indeed. Cat butt. No, oh, cat butt. All right. Explore nearby clusters to find more rock stars. Cat butt is now following me. Short game. I mean, kind of. We could probably go and do more, but like I said, it's already 3 a.m. I still have more to get through. Let's at least poke around a little bit longer, but I'm probably going to have to call it on this game pretty soon. Like, I wasted way too much time playing some other things. Like, oh, I don't know, the monster dating game. No suitable area for landing in sight. Interesting. Here's our weird black hole thing that was doing its thing a minute ago. Obsession with butts today? Oh, just when I get to name something in a video game, I usually name it something butts. The only other time I discussed butts was talking about the Corgi game, and the Corgi game explicitly calls the collectibles you have Corgi butts.
Oh. Interesting. The Rusted Lake Cluster. Got the vinyl. Cool. I am watching my, uh, my oxygen really carefully right now. Maybe I should collect more plants. Yeah, I've, I've got a feeling I might just die here. I chose poor pathing, possibly. Okay, let's move back. No, no, I know how to navigate, thank you. We'll try one more spot on this cluster. Because I can, I can exit anytime I want. Exit because something's blocking it. Yeah, I gotta say, I don't really like the menu when you go sit in the chair. I really think I should just go straight to, you know, the thing where you do the driving. Yeah, I could see playing the rest of this. Not today, but I could. Alright. Like I said, this is cool. It has Cosmic Hat. I am happy about that. Worth playing. How much more is there on the list? How many have we been through? I started trying to go a little faster. Okay, 34. We're not in a bad state. This is theoretically possible. Uh, Super Sushi Roll. This is a one-person developer who made a cool game. This, this is the kind of game you'd like watch at GDQ, but it would be at like 3 in the morning, and the run's going to be all of like 5 minutes. But you'd still think it was kind of cool. But yeah, you're a Sushi Roll. You can control the Sushi Roll. You can also control the chopsticks as they move up and down. We aren't even going to try to beat the demo, but we're going to play the demo for a couple minutes. Um, because it was kind of cool. Also, the developer uh, gave away a big sushi plushie to the person who had the best time on the demo by the end of it, of PAX, which was pretty cool. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to speed run this for a couple minutes. And I'm not going to open Thalamus. I really don't want to open Path to Thalamus. Oh, this one also runs in full screen mode, which is weird. But yeah, this, this is like a score game because there's like stuff you can collect, but like I, I could totally see someone submitting a run of this to GDQ. There we go. Yeah, classic, we're not gonna mess with things. Oh, there, oh yeah, there's a timer. But like, it's a, it's a physics game. But you also have paths. Path to Thalamus, never finished it. You know, that's fair. Me and Snyder finished it today. It was weird. I kind of thought the plot went up its own ass. Um, and after the fact, we looked it up, and it turns out that it's, like, a Spanish developer, which explains a lot of the weirdness in the dialogue. Um, I assume it makes more sense in the native Spanish. That That's my best guess. But yeah, so with this one, you control the sushi left and right motion with the left stick and the assorted platforms and other objects with the right stick. Um, when I was playing this at PAX, I, note, I noted that during the demos you can move the sushi sticks, but you can't move the platforms. Um, that, that was my feedback for the developer, and I, I think they appreciated it. But like, you can get all of these like items and stuff if you want to do a collectathon. If you just want to, you know, t jolt yourself to the end, you go as fast as possible. You can get some dongo. Unfortunately, no cats to serve it. Um, also, if you are considering, I wouldn't necessarily say it was a great game. Like, the problem with Thalamus was, like, it starts pretty weak. It gets better. The puzzles are actually kind of cool by the end of the game. But it starts so weak. There we are. Just have to cross this gap. Oh, you kidding? No, no, we got it. Don't mind a walk-around game if it's compelling enough? Yeah, the, the plot for that is not compelling. Even reaching the end, we're like, really? That was it? Also, the knives kill your sushi, which is cute. Like, I don't think I would personally play this, but I could definitely see this making, like, a certain class of person very happy. And that kind of person would be at GDQs. Because, like, you could easily play this as a speedrun game with the in-game timers. Or you could play it, um... Crap as a collect-a-thon thing.
Let's just try that again. There we go. Like, the levels are simple. The mechanics are easy to understand. Mastery is a bit difficult. I do like the alternate paths. Like, you don't have to play this the hard way if you don't want to. Except the final levels in the demo. There we go. No! Pathalmus was gorgeous. It's kind of dreamy atmosphere, but didn't grab you. The atmosphere was in places really good, but some of the mechanics make the atmosphere worse. Like the uh, weather spheres. Nope. Um, the way those actually work, which I'm not going to spoil in case you do go back, is kind of obnoxious in places. Um, I think it's a kind of pretty game. I don't know if it's really pretty. I don't like. I think it's the kind of thing that didn't age well. Like, especially in an era where we have an awful lot of games that look and play like that. But... Anyway, that's what this is. It's fun. I would I would, I would, would say give this one a go. Like I said, I'm not going to play it for very long, unfortunately. Cause I'm, also because I'm playing badly. Um, and we have, like, three more that are in the immediate list that all have demos. Um, capes. I'm going to skip the demo for Capes. Because this was a last-minute edition. Uh, this was kind of interesting. It's a superhero strategy game. So think like Final Fantasy Tactics, except it's superheroes. Um, can we see the actual gameplay? Um, and so all of them have like skills. Like it seems very complicated, and I'm not certain like how it's going to work in the long run, because clearly they want to have some sort of plot. But I'm also just kind of tired of superheroes. So... It's interesting. I played it for a few minutes. It seems to be adequate in its, its field. It has, like, you know, um, dangers on the field itself, which is a nice tactic. The characters all have diff very different abilities, so it's not kind of the sameness of Final Fantasy Tactics where you just smack people in the face with a sword. But it is what it is. Um, Wudo. Oh, this was actually pretty cute. Um, this, is, this is literally a jigsaw game. A 3D jigsaw game. Um... I didn't play the first level, I just picked it up and started playing and I understood what they were doing. And this this is really cute. Honestly. Um, if you liked, I guess, something like unpacking or other things, like you're literally just placing things in a 3D space to match the jigsaws. It's really good for what it is. Um, I think I played it with a mouse and keyboard. I played it with a mouse. And there's a story and there's some characters and I didn't pay attention to any of that. But just like, it's, it's chill gameplay. I could see enjoying this on a plane or... Just picking this up on a quiet afternoon, being like, I want to play something, but I want to actually play something that's really hard, you know? Just just chill. Absolutely chill. I appreciate this sort of, like, I don't know, chill core. There's probably a t good term for it. But it was cute. Uh, no longer human. Oh, yeah, this. I think I picked up a card for this just because of its uh, thing. It's aesthetic. I didn't play this. I just spent a bit of time looking at it. I like the lasers. That's all I can say this. I probably wouldn't play this. I do like high energy cyber goth action. Fuck them up. Uh, which, you know, could describe a very different kind of... See, it describes that kind of game. Some candies Tron going on here. Anyway, I saw it. I thought it looked cool. I don't think I'll ever play this. And then reveal. Oh, what was this? Narrative... Oh, dang, I don't even remember. I don't think I played this. I don't think I spent that much time looking at this. I don't even know how I have a... I, I got a pin for this. Yeah, I remember nothing about this. It's probably like a horror walking simulator of some sort. Solve some puzzles. Do some things. I mean, clearly, this is an obvious puzzle. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I have a little bit of disdain from this, because I literally saw this in Ripper, and Ripper was made in 93, where you have this class of, of puzzle. But it could be cool. It could not be. I don't know. All right, we're finally done with day one. I played approximately 30 day, 39 games on day one. Uh, Ebenezer and the something or other, Invisible World. This is basically a Symphony of the Night-like. It, it clearly wants to be Symphony of the Night. It's really cool in that sense. And it decided to kind of take a different tack on its plot. It's going for the Christmas Carol. I did actually meet one of the ghosts. Um, Ghost of Christmas Present, I think, the fat one. It was the fat one, right? 
It was a Ghost of Christmas Past that was the fat one. Anyway, um, the animatic is nice. I didn't watch the animatics. But basically, instead of getting new abilities specifically by Ebenezer, he summons ghosts. And the ghosts are the abilities. Like, the Air Dash was a ghost. Um, and you can equip certain ghosts that also help you by, like, shooting things. It seemed like a cool idea. Took way longer. It was way better than you expected. I appreciate that. I only finished day one. I was hoping to finish the rest. I don't know if I can, though. We'll see. I don't know if I have enough content for another stream of this. But still, this was cool. And it was tucked away in a corner next to Pink Gorilla's booth, so not a lot of people were playing it. Bad positioning on this one in PAX, but I, I you know... I don't think that's their fault. But it, it's a Symphony of the Night, like, you can clearly see this. He has the Symphony of Light forward dash, or backward dash. Um, and we're not going to see it. You can equip different weapons, like he has his cane by default, but I started using this, like, long sight, or long whip weapon, that I found suited me a bit better. Ghosts of Joestar's past? Exactly. You know, I just can't stand it. Anyway, this seemed cool. I might play this one when it comes out, because clearly I love Symphony of the Night. If they do even a, te like, a Approximation, 85%. I'd be happy to play this. Um, Prison City. This was another late edition uh, demo. It is good. Simply that it is good. So this is literally... Stop that. This is literally the movie Escape from New York. Except it's Contra. That's what this is. It's Escape from New York, but it's Contra. Um, I don't see how they could go wrong. I played this for a bit. I had fun. Um, I like how it's how it does its cutscenes and stuff. They clearly this particular company is clearly like going for the NES core style and doing a decent job of it, as far as I can tell. But I don't have the like Fiskbit's eye for this kind of thing. Um, they had the flyer I got from the mouse. So had a few other games. Apparently, they worked with Troma to make a Toxic Avenger game, which was cool. It seemed like um, I don't think they're actually trying to get it on the NES, but they're clearly going for very NES styling things. There's things you certainly can't do, like all the sprites on the screen or that giant helicopter would be impossible on the NES without a completely black, blank background. Um, but it did seem cool. Um, and we'll boot this one for a couple minutes. Like we're we're almost like there's there's these. Those will, uh, this is the third to last one. Okay, we, we can get away with that. I think we can get away with that. We're not going to play any of the other demos for very long. <laughs> But we could, we'll play Prison City for, like, a minute here. Yes, a Toxic Avenger game. That is, I believe, what it was. I might be misremembering, but it definitely was a trauma. Like, they quite were, were literally... Uh, Anton was one of the last games I played. This is going in rough order of what I played. So that's why it's grouped the way it is. 94. Yeah, the Grim Future. We're going to skip over all the plot. We're just going to play for, like, three minutes. Anton is also the loudest game, so I hope it, that it doesn't blow anyone's ears out, because I did adjust the volume settings. I might want to put them back for Anton, actually. Can't, oh, can't see game. Fair point. I forgot to do that setup part. Must have polished Rainbow Six. Uh, yeah, I skipped over all of the plot and stuff, so don't worry if you think you missed something, because you didn't. Not really. Um, we're just going to do some gameplay, unfortunately. We can do the intro again if, if we need to. There we go. Thank you for reminding me. I would have started playing for a bit. So you got your chakram thingies. They're cool. You can destroy boxes and not afraid of anything. You kill mon you kill dudes, you climb on fences like the big action man you are. Um, I, you can grab edges. Like, that's the key thing. I like how this guy's just, like, not even trying. He doesn't even know where you are, and he's like, yeah, whatever, I'm good. But yeah, this is this is that kind of run and gun contra thing you want with the Escape from New York aesthetics, with the Escape from New York plot, and the uh, the NES aesthetics. Yeah. Come on. You know, I probably should just use the D-pad for this. I need to have the ups be completely straight. Slide, 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 slide. You know, I think that thing might be immune to damage. Just guessing. 
wants to polish the ring of souls. Not sure what that means, but I think I'm okay with that. But yeah, th this is exactly what it says on the tin. If you want this kind of running gun thing, you will be a happy person. I had fun playing it when I was at the expo. The chakra thing is kind of interesting. I kind of wonder if it, you'll end up being able to use it to like retrieve items at some point. But, like I said, I, I didn't beat the first level. I spent some time. Yeah, they're doing like the Metal Gear Solid style, or Metal Gear style of cutscenes. Only killable with super weapons? Yeah, probably. Those moving things from Mega Man, yeah. Difficult man to steal the engine room. Key, I guess that's what I needed. There we go. Let's at least go to the engine room. His name is Hal. He might be shallow. All right, boss. There's a boss in here. Right. This is one of those bosses that all you need to really do is understand how it works, and I didn't. We'll try one more time. I definitely can beat this boss. I definitely beat it during the demo. Rest four. I don't know what that means. Well, what I need to do is not get hit by that. Okay, don't jump that way. I'm trying to drop down. It's got the angle on me. There we go. Okay, that worked. Yeah, just jump. No, I, I needed to, uh, I needed to trick him. Gotta go for it! No, missed it. Maybe the game wants me to sit? Yeah, but why would it say four rest? I mean, clearly it's live, but why rest? It was not a good time to grab my drink. I want to drop to the ground, but the ground keeps catching on fire. Man, these things have a lot of HP. This is exactly the situation I was in last time. I just gotta loop it. Now what? Oh! Rest was using old games for lives? Really? I do not know that. What kind of old games were they used for? Like, what? Like, could you name one? I'm curious. Like, I don't, I'm not doubting you. I'm just curious. Like, I wonder where this, this idea came from. I probably should pay more attention to what I'm doing. No, not slide. Okay, that was also bad. Okay, there we go. I found, I found my strat. Mostly.
good old walk away, and then jump over. Yeah, the boss is pretty is pretty fair. Give us some bite, you like that? Some NES games did that. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, the boss is fine. I'm playing badly. Like, I understand exactly what I have to do. I just wasn't putting it together. Um, and the fact that you can't use the floor keeps you on your toes. Like, I would, personally, if I was doing that boss without the fire floor... He looks like Duke Nukem from the back, doesn't he? Anyway. This, this is a demo. They shouldn't... Oh, yeah. This is a demo. You have to pick one of them. Let's look at cold storage for a moment, but we're not going to spend much time there. Like I said, we need to... I, I need to hurry this up. You can see the map up there. So apparently this is actually, like, two-dimensional. I kind of assumed it would just be Contra-esque. I also thought that might hurt me. But apparently there's space to move in other directions, so... Yeah, in retrospect, why did I pick the ice level? I think signs point to I make bad decisions. Alright, anyway. Cool level, cool game. I do like that exit worked promptly. There was no lag in that shutdown. Alright, what else we got? Um, to oh, this one! This one's weird. It has terrible cover art for what it is. Just look at the, uh, look at this art. Look at this art right here. You've got these muscle-bound Toho characters. I have no idea why they did this. But what this is, is literally Age of Empires, except it's with Toho characters. That's, that's what this is. I have no idea why they chose this ridiculous muscle-bound thing, because I thought it was a fighting game when I walked past it and ignored it. But no, it's literally Age of Toho. I don't understand. It was fun. I played the tutorial. Was on the boss, you would have alternated between the rails and the ground. I understand that it was just boss number one. Yeah. Like the rails catch fire. That could have been a good forcing function. But yeah, this was cool. Um, the the difference from what I recall, like you have your hero units, clearly like Reimu and Marissa, and I guess um, Alice right there. Um, and you, you go through levels and you fight things. You can recruit and you build things using wood and stone and and you're, instead of food, you have booze, because that's how the game is. But this was fun. I played the first level. I thought it was cool. I would definitely play it. Do you need a reason for Muscle Bound Girls? Not necessarily, but, like, I think when you're trying to advertise a game that has such a niche audience, you shouldn't pick something that, like, screams, like, uh, like you're making a version of Cho Aniki or something. Like, that's what this kind of art screams to me, is it's going to be a side-scrolling shoot-em-up with muscle-bound women, which I would be fine. Joe and Nikki's fine, too, though it's muscle-bound men. Um, but still. Anyway, this one's cool. I might actually play that in the future. Um, this was also at the Japan booth. Poland. Okay, so Poland, they were trying to sell me on a few different games. So what's interesting is these aren't, uh, these aren't for sale. Apparently, the... Just Poland decided to make some games to show off Polish history and teach people about it, and then they gave them away from free. So this is another, like, escape room game about ciphers and and learning. It's educational. Um, I could see playing this, maybe with Snyder, maybe on stream, I don't know. I do like this class of game. And it's free. Can't complain. Maybe it's taking the piss of Age of Empires art? Maybe. Like, I don't remember what the Age of Empires box looked like. Box. Well, you might you might be onto something there, actually. The Age of Empire, yeah, okay, the three heads definitely. And you might have to solve Enigma. You never know. Um, it's possible to do Enigma by hand, provided you know the initial positions of the rotors and the state of the plug board. But it's not fun. Just letting you know. Well, it's usually taking the piss. Not taking a piss. Um, this could also go well. I don't know. Maybe the British use A instead of the indefinite versus definite more often. Anyway, it's free. Things could be worse. Um, similarly, they also made a sort of turn-based RPG game. Mostly negative. That's not a good sign. Um, about Warsaw in World War II. If you want to learn about the occupation of Warsaw, this is a thing you could play. I don't know. I don't think this is something I would play. Take it. Yeah, okay. I think you have a point. You have a point. But, yeah, I don't know. I didn't play either of these. I'm much more likely to play the Cypher game than this. 
But, you know, you can see them sort of standing on two sides of the field. I guess the art style kind of reminds me of, like, a Flash game. I don't know. City of Heroes isn't a good name for this. Oh, yeah, he even mentioned Darkest Dungeon. Exactly. When I was talking to him. I've never played Darkest Dungeon. I mixed it up with a different game that has a similar name. Something Dungeon. I forget, but, yeah. This is what this is. It's free. Very much whatever. Um, quilts and Cats. So, apparently, Poland has a cottage industry converting... Thank you. Um, just converting board games into game, into video games? This looked cute, and because uh, I walked by there once, they gave me a Steam code for the soundtrack. So that was nice of them. Make Barb plot this. Ends with Warsaw being turned into, into dust. Very possibly. Either way, this, I think this plays a bit like Carcassonne, but because you're playing it with these cats, the cats also wander on the board, and that's cute. It looked cute. I really don't have much other to say than that. Like, my understanding is it might be a good puzzle, like a, a good board game. I really don't know. <laughs> so that's that's what I have to say about, about cats and quilts. Uh, cricket. Cricket was one of the reasons I bothered going back the second day. Because I was like, oh, I should have tried to play Cricket. Was it even there? Oh, yes, it was. This is probably another one of those Earthbound-inspired games. But I enjoyed playing it specifically because of a really dumb mechanic that I kept running into. And I'm using that term very specifically, running into. Um, one of the mechanics of the game is you can sort of charge up a little sprint and then run around faster, which is nice. Uh, but if you do that to normal people, it pisses them off and raises the difficulty of the game. And I just couldn't stop doing that every time I played this. Um, I'm a little bit of a sucker for the aesthetic of, like, kids playing around and having an RPG thing. And I like this better than Earthbound because you still have the on two sides of the field rather than the more, like, Dragon Quest style battle system. Is it good? I don't know. Would I play it when it comes out? Very possibly. But as you can see, it finally has a release date and it's it's long in the future. I also played this at PAX 2000, like. Uh, probably 21? Did I play at 21? Maybe 2020. No, no, maybe 19. It's been a long time. Costume Quest, yes. A little bit like that. That's sort of the vibe I get. I think the art isn't great, but I think it works. So, we'll see. They also gave me a magnet for playing their game at PAX a while ago. And I still have it, and I like magnets, so that's another reason I'm mentioning this. I could easily play, I could easily see myself playing this on stream. Um... Oh, let's school. This is going to be quick. Uh, this is not a game for me. This is... I didn't see that coming. This is a Japanese school-making sim. I fully expect to see this on Let's Game It Out at some point, wherein he will break the game horribly. Um, there's probably a, a person out there who this will make them very happy, uh, but the extended tutorial made it really hard to like enjoy as a game at PAX. And for a game where you're building stuff and doing this sort of thing, I don't imagine it's easy to really convey it all at once. But I played it. It's here. So. Yeah, it's a school-making sim. That's what that's what it is. You you make a school. And I mean, it's clearly a Japanese school because of the aesthetics. You got your, you know... Your <laughs> Sakura trees. And of course, just the name. Let's School is very silly Japanese. I don't think it's made by a Japanese dev. But I have no idea. Anyway, that, that's that. Um, Dragon is dead. Oh yeah, this was another Symphony of the Night-like. Um, it's not on Steam, it's on Switch only, so I can't show you, but it, it plays like Symphony of the Night. It seemed kind of cool. Had more statistical stuff going on than the other ones. It seemed cool. I don't have any more to show you, unfortunately, other than this one picture. Oh, well, I have this picture, which you can start with different characters. Isn't that cool? And, uh, and this picture, it's a big dragon. The dragon is dead, apparently, though, so I don't know. Uh, yeah, I can't say much about this. This is cursed. Yeah, the, the Japanese... The, the, the thing was definitely weird. Um, yeah, Super Mario Bros. Wonder. I played this for 10 minutes. It's good. Most people who are aware of this, who own a Nintendo Switch, who can afford 60 bucks, will probably buy this. I don't need to tell you about this. Nintendo already did. And probably did today, even better. Uh, but I did stand in line to play it. Uh, Animal Well. This is the game that's made by... Or this being published by Donkey's new company, Big Mode. So I went and played this for a bit. 
it's kind of a contemplative uh, Metroidvania style. Um, I didn't get to play very much of it, because again, on the third day I was kind of just done, and also I needed to come back and play Deltarune, so I didn't have that much time. Um, I really don't understand this trailer, because like you're this frog dude, and you jump around, and you occasionally get cool things, or need to move things around, and there's some lever action, and so there's some button pushing. It seems okay. Like, it's, it's very much more in the, like, puzzle and atmosphere exploration class of Metroidvania than the you-need-to-be-strong-and-beat-up-things-and-kill-all-the-Metroids Metroidvania. Like, this seems cool. I'll probably play it. Uh, yeah, I did see the creepy thing. Yeah, you don't want to steal his frisbee. He gets pissed off when you steal his frisbee. Um, also, like, death is pretty cheap. Like, you, there's not, like, humongous amounts of effort to go back. You also save by talking on phones, which is just bizarre. Like, that's a phone. You talk on that to save. I don't know if it's quirky bizarre or just out of place bizarre. This whole thing is just strange, aesthetically, and I'm kind of curious how it all fits together. Enough that I definitely want to play it, though. It had humongous lines before, by the way, and that's why I didn't end up playing it on any of the prior days. Um, oh, this. Um, this game didn't work very well when I played it. It crashed, it, it soft-locked the moment I got to the intro part. And the biggest problem with the demo was that I had to play through the intro cutscene again. And the text, as you might be able to guess, moves very slowly and you can't speed it up or cancel it. And so every time you investigate something, it takes forever. And I think it's like some sort of crafting adventure game. I don't know. Didn't care enough to figure out more after spending like five minutes watching the intro again and reading the intro again and just... Even the guy there didn't seem to have any confidence in it. It was really weird. He was like, yeah, it needs to be cooked more. Earthbound references. Yeah, Air Nintendo just to put it at the top. Sorting. Um, yeah, Anton Blast is at the bottom. It was the last thing I played. All right, Captain Wayne. We'll do this one quick. We're not going to be able to play the full demo. Apparently the demo was really long. They mentioned that it was like 20 levels. This is Doom. It's Doom, except like One Piece. You're a pirate captain who's pissed off that somebody has stolen his treasure and his left arm is a shotgun. It's built off of Z-Doom, I asked, because I was watching how it was playing. And there's, there's very few things in this world that feel like Doom exactly that aren't Doom. And this is Doom. Um, it's got an aesthetic. It's going to have, like, animated cutscenes. Apparently, they're going to have, you know, like, 90 minutes of animated cutscenes. The guy at the booth was dressed up like the pirate guy, which was also kind of cool. So, I don't know. But this is what this is, and we're going to play it for a few minutes. So, since I have it, and I can. Uh, and then we'll do Anton Blast, and that'll, that'll be the end of the stream. <laughs> Put that into full screen. And then we will load her up. This is another 1080p. Yeah, the way I did this, I think, actually worked out pretty well. Oh, it even says G, G, the executable name is GZ Doom. So clearly obvious here. Uh, is it capturing? It's not capturing. Why is it not capturing? Maybe I shouldn't have picked GZ Doom. Oh, that's the top. Maybe we won't play this one. Um, well, it, it's not picking it up. Like, it's rendering. You can hear it. Oh, there it goes. It's working now. I guess I needed to interact with it. Well, hopefully it keeps working. Okay, there we go. New Voyage. Uh, we'll do the tutorial area. All right. Oh, this is like baby, baby Doom tutorial, isn't it? Yeah. There will be platforming. You use E to interact with things. You can be slower with shift. You can use, you can duck with control. You can kick, kick with Q. See? He's gone now. You can constantly kick, kick. Give him the mighty boot. Oh right, yeah, and you can also like just do a like a weird 
kick dash in midair. That's like what it's really bringing to the table. Oh, I guess also you can punch people. Didn't do that when I was playing the demo. It packs. That's kind of cool. Anyway, got shotgun shells. You can shoot arbitrary objects to make them lower, because this is Doom, and that's how things work. Uh, also, hit scan. Lots of hit scan. So I'm not sure I like that aspect. Because hit scan in Doom is not fun. But. Like I said, we're not going to play much of this. Apparently, this demo has an awful lot of content. But I, I don't have the time, unfortunately. So you can learn how to load and save. Definitely quick save often because, you know, you're playing... You're playing a Doom game. So let's do F6 just to do it. That turn message is off. Because that's F8. That's not... That's not the right one at all. Sure. Quick. Quirr. You want to load Quirr? Yes, we loaded Quirr. Isn't that beautiful? You're dying? The music? So sudden you lost it? You're writing us killed you the two of your favorite songs. This is where we part ways now. Your struggle is okay. You will get better with time. The biggest piece of advice to you is... Always be on the run. You've got to keep moving. No matter how hard it gets, keep moving. Shave his bail. <laughs> I mean, if you gotta have a, you gotta have a pirate song, I'm having trouble getting like this stuff to work. We'll we'll pull away the first level available for a moment. But yeah, hit scan not my favorite of doing things. But the kick, however, kick scan works well for him. No man's head. The scuba guys are hit scan. Probably should be using more punching. You know, you click shrimp and ale. But like, generally, I like to clear out things, but I don't think that's the way most people, most Doom players play things. They just kind of run through places. As you can see, you know, hit scan. So, I died. It's okay. Like shrimp and ale? I, too, am a fan. Not necessarily at the same time. But yeah, hit scan hurts. Yep. So that's that's what this is. I'm not very good at it. I probably need some practice. I'm used to do taking Doom at a slightly slower speed. But this is kind of cool. I appreciate what they're doing, and I like that they're making like a new thing. That people can enjoy. And the fact that it's built on uh, G G Z Doom is just a good sign, I think. Okay, and last, but certainly not least, Anton Blast. Do you like Wario? Do you like Pizza Tower? You're probably going to like this. This is not what I expected when I clicked this. I'm destruction worker. Some people call me the dynamite man. I do appreciate weird real world video footage for video games. <laughs> In fact, um, Explosion Man had the same sort of thing, and I really liked that, since we're on the same sort of topic. But yeah, this this is very much in the same sort of vein. Get to the end of the level, destroy something, get back to the beginning, collect poker chips and beer and things. This one I was still a little bit worried about. It might be too loud, but we're going to play it, and that's going to be it. Wario Blast featuring Bomberman? Exactly. Uh, this is 720. It's already screaming at me. Dynamite demo. Oh, right. Need to make it visible. This is not that size. Um, can I fix this? That seems right. That seems wrong. Oh, fuck it. Let's just turn it full screen and maybe it'll just work. No! You're not making it better! Your friend Pedro? Oh, man, people were playing that for, like, a bit. I remember that being, like, big in the speed game thing for a bit, and then it just kind of faded. I ditched that. 
make it a 1080p game, and that should solve the problem. Come on! Oh, needs to make it visible. Alright, cool. Play demo. We can be Anton or Annie. I'm gonna be Annie because I was Anton last time. Ah, I like I like Annie. I'm not sure she plays any different than Anton, but basically, you can attack things. You can rush forward. It's got like like bad scaling you saw in like the you know S or Super FX era. Maybe Game Boy Advance era might be more appropriate for that kind of scaling. No, I don't want that. I want to slide. Slide, 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 slide. But yeah, you can kind of just like jump around by using the your axe or your hammer thingy. Oh, those hurt you. Don't land on those. They hurt you. Well, you have a lot of health. You basically can ignore all of the extra things. So in this case, you gotta do jump to the background, which is another one of those, like, Virtual Boy kind of callbacks. So I think this was, like, a thing people did in the Virtual Boy games. Yeah, Virtual Boy, exactly. Well, but the Virtual Boy didn't have that, like, weird sprite scaling. Like, that's very much Super FX chip. Um, really need to stop doing that. Oh, I hate those guys so much. Virtual Boy Wario Land did that? Okay. Anyway, blow up hearts. So as you go through, there's different switches you press, at least in this level, that blow up blocks. And you will use those eventually. But yes, if, if this if you want more Wario Land, this this is gonna suit you well. Can't go down that way? Okay, maybe maybe I forgot how this works. Either way, I don't need all these poker chips. I'm not exactly sure what the story is, because I can't really couldn't really hear the Firefox bit, but. And there's definitely parts of this mechanic that I did not do not understand from having played it the two times. But we're just kind of goofing around here. I don't know why it's playing cards. I guess that goes well with like the chips aesthetic. But still a little bit weird. That's a pit. Don't fall down the pit. I don't like the arrow raccoons. I just don't like them. Listar game. I could I'd see that. This is not the main character. The main character is a, a, a Irish dude. How you doing, Circle Friendo? We were even discussing uh, Bun Bun 3 earlier because there was a character changing mechanic in the game. And you could do it in midair. It was a Polish game based upon a folklore thing which was made popular by a 1970s TV show. Don't ask me how this works. I still don't know. Now this is the last on our tour. Up pipes. Right, those hurt me. Found some spirits. Ouch. There we go. Get, get over there. Get over here. But yeah, these are these. We were going through a bunch of the the games I played at PAX, the good and the bad and the random. Just kind of the fun. Feels like Pizza Tower. I mean, that's basically it. It's 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 got that appeal. Oh, I got a big radish. 
I should keep a lookout for big radishes more often. That was satisfying. Yeah, it's like Pizza Tower, but instead of being an angry Italian, you're a drunken Irishman. I'm still not sure how I kind of feel about that, but eh, it's probably okay. Yeah, it's happy hour. So now that it's happy hour, we need to escape the stage. So like I said, it's definitely coming from the same sort of place as Pizza Tower and many of the Wario games. You need to stop getting those things. Um, I think unlike the Pizza Tower, I think this one might place more emphasis on score. I'm not sure. But it's not exactly the field I care the most about. But it's cute. It's fun. I would say this one's probably going to do pretty well when it comes out. If I had to make a guess. I feel they nerfed the raccoons. Like, I felt like I had a lot more trouble with the, the spearheaded raccoons when I played this at PAX. But I guess maybe I'm better at it now? Or maybe they nerfed them. I'm not really sure. I think I might like the move set in Pizza Tower a little bit better, but I suspect that might be something that just, like, if I spent enough time with this, it wouldn't actually matter. Oh, you see him right there with their friggin' hats and their expressions of pride. I'm just gonna wreck their day, stupid raccoon arrowheads. I don't think I managed to take the high route here. Well, didn't manage to take the high route here either. Oh, hey. Wish I'd noticed those earlier when I was playing a PAX. But oh well. Those stereotypes are the same things? I don't know. I, I feel like there's a difference between anger, like there's passion. There's forms of anger that generally can be celebrated. There's very few forms of drunkenness, especially drunken rowdiness, that can be celebrated. And I mean, come on now, this is completely on the nose. I literally have a bottle of spirits following me. How did I do this before? Oh, whatever, it doesn't matter. Stupid raccoon. In we go! Oh yeah, I could have gotten the record. Oh well. Also, these totally remind me of the cheese blocks in Pizza Tower. Just the faces on them. I think we're pretty close to the end, though. I mean, I celebrated on the culturally acceptable, you know, Drunken Rowdiness Day. Several of them. I mean, there's Cinco de Mayo. There's, of course, St. Patrick's Day. Halloween? I don't know. Either way. Every day that ends with an A. <laughs> well, we beat it. I didn't die. And that was the demo. So you can actually see how this will do this. You can see you can play as either Anton, who is angry in red, or Annie, who is angry in green. But they're keeping the same sort of color scheme. You can see very intense reds and, and greens. Oh, you missed Anton. Oh, darn. Well, I guess... All right, I'll, I'll, I'll play a few minutes more so we didn't miss it all. I didn't play this stage at, at PAX. I only played the first one. I'm not going to beat it, but I'm going to play for a couple of minutes because I'm tired. I did not expect this stream to go on as long as it did, and part of that was I just did not think, oh yeah, I really should cancel out of these demos before I beat them. Didn't think about that till a lot later. Especially with longer demos. Anton was a lot shorter. I hate those blocks than some of the other demos. Uh, oh, hey, look! Pentagrams! There sure is some Satan here. Pat, just jump on. Do the hammer jump. Do another hammer jump. There you go. Oh, that's in the background. 
That's somewhat irritating. All right, I got it, though. That's background. Don't try to jump on that. It's in the background. I'm digging the falling things. I think those are going to be hilarious. Those will probably be hilarious during happy hour. It's your favorite holiday. Thanks, Bill. Hit GG. What's the recommendation for this? Turn down the screen shake. Okay, we can do that. It's nice that that's an... Oh, God. Tremendous amounts of options with that. Yeah, I think one is probably the amount I want, honestly. Was not even aware that was an option. You know, I felt like I was going to get hit there, but then I didn't. Yeah, I still there's like some movement options that I don't really grok. They mentioned something about like parrying. No, bad raccoon. I just went one way. Oh, does this... Does it stack? Oh, please tell me it stacks. Oh no, okay, it doesn't stack. You can only do one back run layer. I was really hoping that you could do a second one. That would have been so cool. I think they overdid it. Well, it's not much of a complaint because you, you can turn down. I like that. Give me those sorts of options. Like, there's some options in games I really, really want to have. Like, um, give, always give me subtitles. I almost always want subtitles in my game if the plot matters. Um, am I hosed? Is there a way to... <laughs> I guess I can go back the way I came. Don't mind screen shake. Yeah, there we go. What's up, Tollbooth? Apparently I passed the toll booth. I'm not sure what I did to deserve it, but I'm glad I continued on this path. We definitely need to needed to do this. Don't! Anton, please! Okay, it works. That works better than expected, actually. Hey, I found a shortcut! It's what people get when they don't put blocks at the top of their Oh, that's that's lava. That's also lava. I feel I'm gonna need that later. Better do it now. Hey, I want I want that radish. Try this trick and spin it. Hold oh god. Alright, we're we're doing that. Uh Hold down, attack as Tornado Anton to spin faster and breaks the blocks. Okay. This makes sense to me. Gotta love being the Tasmanian Devil. That was fun while it lasted. And now it's gonna last a lot longer. As I keep going back to where I've been. That was enough. I'm getting dizzy just watching him. Oh, I'm not supposed to go there. Oh, I oh I need the I need the speed. That's what I need. Okay. Head will collapse. There's nothing in it. Yeah. All right. Well, that didn't work. Try this again. Because, like, I definitely need to be go. This gives me a faster rate of movement anyway. I can just take it easy till I get, like, up here. No, maybe. Okay, I see the problem. I'm jumping here. I need to bounce and then. I, I understand what I'm doing wrong, I think. I'm glad I have the latitude to be able to do something about it. There we go. Cool off pool. Let's just go through this.
Yeah, I probably should have held the attack button so I moved a wee bit faster. Also, clutch boost using your shoulder. Dash in a certain way. Oh. Can I just make this? I can just make that. I don't, I don't need the whirly gig. Gives you a boost each time you hit the area, so on the bar. Don't think I grok what you're putting. You can also clutch boost by using your shoulder bash in a certain way. It gives you a boost each time you hit the area on the bar each time. I'm not certain I'm picking up what you're laying down. But we do have to cross that much better, I guess. The de I, I couldn't tell you. It's very possible I'm just not understanding well. It is pretty late. I am very tired. There we go. Whee! Apparently, going in the muck also gives you the speed to do this. Got past the troll booth. That's on fire. That's weird. Oh, they're bombers. Oh, that makes sense. Suddenly platforming. I don't think I want to go this way. Nor do I think I can. There's going to be a tornado over here. Somewhere. Oh, we're doing the background thing. Okay. It's a classic. I'm not sure I actually cared for that. Like, I don't think that helped me out all that much. But oh well, that's a thing that happened. Sound effects are off point. That's lava. What? Why is he following me at rapid speed? Oh, because he's, he's a charger, right. Oh, it's one of these, okay. Push back right there. Gotta go up. Nope, that's background. That looks way too much like foreground for me. There is some nice leniency on those platforms, though. Oh. That's how you do that thing. Come on. Getting over it with Anton and lots of whiskey. Whenever you use your base attack move, the dash, a bar at the bottom right is to appear. If you time another dash when it reaches the top, you'll speed boost. Put something like that on the tour. Oh, okay. It's a little less overwhelming than Pizza Tower. Fair. Pl more platform exploration posts closer to water than Pizza Tower. Yes. But I'm happy that both exist. Like, I like Pizza Tower. Pizza Tower is... You know, a 90s cartoon show condensed into this nonsense. Oh god, we, we switch. Um, as bizarre as it is, the drunken Irishman is more subdued. Whee! But yeah, Pizza Tower is much more like run through the stage as quick as you can. Whereas this is definitely not advocating for this nearly as much. I'm certain the combo system probably does incentivize you. Oh, I, oh, I, oh, okay. I understand now. So here's the problem. I never actually use the regular dash. I probably should, but I never do. But yeah, I, I see the bar. 
I see the bar now, and I understand exactly what you're trying to tell me. I'm not sure I'm ever going to actually use it in this stage. Totem trick shot. What? I think I want to jump on the cheese ball. Is that what it wants out of me? Yep. Anton Pepino need to get a crossover platformer? Is it Anton Blast? They've already cro- What? Really? So Pepino's actually already in this game? In, oh, an Anton Ball. Ah, okay. I've never heard of Anton Ball. Um, it's one of those, like, it wouldn't surprise me if this showed up. They were also exhibiting, um... Slap City 2 when I was there. And Slap City 2 did have Pepino as an assist, I think. Very much, I wouldn't be surprised to see Anton join them. That works. And that does not. Is that cheese with, like, glass in it? Huh. I thought I saw a different uh, tile for it, but maybe I'm just imagining things. Nope. I can get to this one. There we go. I missed! Very creative horizontal breakout platforming game in the vein of OG Mario Bros. arcade game. Interesting. I'm a bit of trouble visualizing that, but it's definitely like if it's on the same page, I, if it's done by the same dev, I might just go look it into. It. Like just go pull up that dev page and look. Right after this. All little birds back there. Yeah, they do have glass in them sometimes. Maybe faces. Same devs. Here's the paddle, you move around the area. And dash into the ball to smack into the area. Yeah. I'm trying to determine if I want to finish this, this one level. I think I'm so close I should just do it. But then I'm like, oh man, it's... Oh, we're encroaching upon 5 a.m. These things happen. Delirious game for delirious hours. Yo, yeah. No! Well, I, I got half of what I wanted out of that. This part's annoying. I'm sure this was inspired by old Crash Bandicoot games. I can definitely see that. Lots of boxes to break. Kind of hear it in the soundtrack too. I've also played either, any of the Crash games, so I've kind of forgotten most of what you do except bash into boxes and be sad when you missed a box and don't get your gem. That's a very frequent occurrence in Crash games, is being sad about not getting your gem. Thank goodness. Oh, I thought I had vultured that. Oh, hold on. You know what? That's what.
Well, I'm glad that didn't kill me. Cool, I get... Oh, I don't get a big poker chip because I didn't jump at the right time. It's nice that it was a secret area instead of death. It's like the secret area in Crash 1, yep. Yeah. Crash remakes, I haven't played What I heard about the Crash remakes, and I don't know if they fixed it, was that the physics were so slightly different that it made some of the levels um, kind of impossible to beat. Uh, that's what I remember reading about, but I think they might have fixed it. But that definitely was a bad thing in, like, a lack of testing sort of way. But that might have only affected, like, Crash 1, because maybe only Crash 1 had, like, ridiculous stuff going on. Oh, it's not happy hour yet. I'm fine. I was briefly worried. Oh, I have to go a, a different way. Oh crap. Um... Oh, that's in the foreground and not very big. I've seen people beat the game, so it's not impossible. Oh, probably. Um, I meant like it was the there was one of those like infamous crash levels. Um, like the bridge one, I think. The people were having trouble getting the precision they needed to jump on, like, a few specific turtles. I think was it. Do not quote me, I do not know. But I also think they actually were, were good and went back and fixed the problem properly. Why do they have glass in them sometimes? Ah. I'm not digging this puzzle. There we go. Way late. In fact, the bottom one's kind of superfluous. There we go. need to do that. I think that level is even easier in the remake, because you can cheese it by walking on the ropes. I think you could walk on the ropes in the OG, but I don't think it was easy. I don't remember. Like I said, this is, this is like, years ago. When did the remakes come out? Like, 15? I think? Oh, crap. Oh, no, no, no! Getting over it with Anton. No, Pat, it's just hitting a ball. Unlike the OG, it doesn't send you all the way back to the beginning. Well, that's a nice kindness. There we go, out of this room. Oh, I'm, I'm still into this room. Just in the background. Well, this is nice. I'm reminded of, like, uh, Sandopolis or that other stage in Sonic. The Sonic 2, the oil ocean. Bringing down the house. Why radishes? Why green? Where am I going? I assume up. Like it's happy hour. I don't got time for this. Wait, I don't have time for this. I don't want to go that way. Time to go be angry. Here's the funny thing. I have no idea where I'm going. This level was long enough that I have actually lost the plot on where I started. Like, I'm pretty sure I started in, like, some sort of hellish lava scape, and now we're in the desert. 
So I'm gonna be curious when we get back to the Hellish Lava Scape, because I have definitely forgotten. Isn't Happy Hour usually back down? Yes. Probably. That worked out really well. Yes, mistakes were made at that moment. Yeah, this is much easier dealing with the uh, spearhead raccoons when you're just going to thrash things all over that way. Hey. Oh, the fire actually has collision? That's fascinating. Oh, no, 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 no. There we go. Ain't got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Actually, I got time for this. <laughs> oh, right. That's lava. When you're playing Lethal Lava Land in Mario 64 and you're not very good at the game, how do you get across? Alright, there's these water spouts! That sure was a mechanic that existed forever ago that I've forgotten about. No, just get up. Stand there. That's all that's required of you. Ooh, big poker chip. And I didn't get killed by the raccoon. I really should have been killed by that raccoon. I was about to say I'm surprised he hasn't thrown fire yet. And then he did. Maybe I shouldn't... Oh, I couldn't have made it up. Wait, could I? Get up there. No, not that one. We are running out of time. What's up, Omar? How you doing? You're in class. Uh, I'm trying to finish up the stream. This is the last thing I'm doing, is, is finishing up Anton Blast. This is this was a stream where I covered all of the games that I, I saw at PAX, whether I played them or not, whether I enjoyed them or not, mostly. Anything I took a card from, or took a picture of, or otherwise. And this was the last thing I played at PAX West, was Anton Blast. And so this is the last thing we're playing tonight. Hopefully, because I do think I'm probably going to end up dying by stupidity here. Maybe not. Okay, that's fine. No, it's not fine. Or if you're speedrunning. Oh, that's true, actually. I was like three feet from the end. Oh, well. It remains happy hour or pizza time or whatever have you. This time will be different. This time I'll get hit in the face with the cheese ball. Whoop. Whoop. Still weird out by the blocks. Not sure what to make of them. Oh, absolutely a comedy of errors. Mistakes were very much made. I could collect the big thing. I don't care about the big thing. I do kind of wonder if it was would have been better to take the trough. Just in terms of pure expedience. But, oh well. Now we wait. I think I'm doing better on time, though. But I did have to do the deal with the squeaky toys. I ju it just had to be done. Well, that was better than last time. Here we go. The water.
Anton doesn't like water. He refuses ice in his whiskey. He is not an on the rocks man. You can just tell. I can't believe I'm missing this again. I could just, I could, I could just jump up here. Yeah, I, I could, I could just jump up there. You don't need to kill him, but you just kind of want to. What's up, Legend Kirby? How you doing? I'm trying to escape happy hour. Or get to the bar for happy hour. I'm not really sure what the plot of this game is now that I think about it. It's 4 a.m. It's far away from happy hour right now. Where I am. By at least 12 hours, I suppose. But yeah, the, the point of this particular stream was to cover all of the things I, I saw and played at PAX. Mostly played, because I didn't really take pictures of other things and didn't really do much. But that's what this stream is, and it's almost over. Okay, well that could have gone better. There we go. I think I'm in the... I, I, no, no, no. I'm at 1 HP. I really want to be careful here. But I think... Oh, maybe there's... But wait, there's more. There's still more. How big is this level? I probably would have failed happy hour anyway. Never heard anything playing in this game at all? No, this is... This game hasn't come out yet. It's called Anton Blast. It's very clearly inspired by... Um, well, I guess I'm going to get the vinyl since it's here. Um, very clearly inspired by Wario games. Um, it's similar in some ways to Pizza Tower. It's different in other ways to Pizza Tower. What happens if I... I no! Out of time. Oh, God. Like, does the ghost of drunken Irish past, like, chase me or something? Who do you think you are? Oh, wait. oh no! <laughs> okay. I hesitated. Do you like Wireland? you like this? Yeah, that jump. What a way to go, indeed. All right, one more try, then I'm calling it. For better or for worse, and I just saw those radishes. I guess it wouldn't have mattered. I had radishes last time. At least I didn't bounce my way back from that other spot. Don't like Wario games? Fair enough. I played a lot of weird things. I played a monster dating sim. Um, we, and I looked at all of the other ones, too. Like, there's some that don't have demos that would have been cool to play, but can't because, you know, there's no demo. There's effectively Age of Empires, but it's made of Toho, which is weird, honestly, but surprisingly decent game. I played it at PAX. The, uh, <laughs> the box art for it does not, does not speak to what it is, but having seen the box art for Age of Empires now, it makes a kind of sense. It's silly, but it makes a kind of sense. Wait for it. I need to go down here. I, there's one thing I will not skimp on. You have to wreck these things. It's the only way to live. Crap. Crap! That part always gets me multiple times. 
You know, what's funny is if I'd done that right, I would have just gotten to the top and wouldn't have had any problems. No problems with this particular whirlwind spot. Up to that point. Alright, here we go. We're taking this jump as, as easily as I can. Because I'm tired of, of that one. They definitely nerfed the mole dudes. Okay, I'm glad to hear it, because like I definitely had trouble with these attacks and not in the fun way. Funk. Funk. That's not the way. This level's humongous. Are we right before that? No, we're not. There's a part. There's another part that I dread. But if I just do it, you know what? It's just a matter of just doing it. Like, that's not hard. You just do it. And then you get hit by that. Oh, no! I didn't want to charge. All right, well, I'm in the same predicament I was in last time. Pretty close to the ending, with only one HP remaining. Remember the first one they released that had a weird interaction? Yeah, it strikes me as very possible that they've they've done some changes since the since PAX. Cause I definitely I suffered with those moles at PAX. Well, I'm definitely here faster than last time. We're not doing that lab. That loop. Yep, one HP Anton. Like I said, this is it. If I fail this time, I fail. And that's the end of it. Hex demo was past me. This is just, I mean, certainly. But I'm done. I tried. That's enough happy hour for me. I'm too tired to get to you. It's almost 5 a.m. and I did not intend to go this late. Bad luck indeed.